big game player. He'll perform tonight, there's no doubt about that. Das, I'm just wondering whether the Dogs may employ a negative forward role on Heath Shaw. Last time they played here, BT, he had 36 kicks at 100%, Heath Shaw. So Melissa Doyle out there. Number one ticket holder for GWS. Try East and your call, Mel, when you're, when you're ready. Okay. Yep. Heads is a call, and it's a tail. Well done. Congratulations. And she is a legitimate Giants fan, Mel Dorr. Loves it, spends a lot of time in the club. Been a great supporter from day one. Easton Wood wins the toss. In answer to your question, Richo, I think they'll have to put some time in the issue. As you said, 36 kicks at 100% last yeah. time they played. Too important a player to, uh, to leave run around and do what he does. Just sets them up with his feet. They want to get it into his hands at half back and use it so well. So I wouldn't be surprised if that does occur tonight on Heath Shaw. This GWS side, last start, they smashed Sydney. They were just tough. They were unbelievable in the contest. And then their runners on the outside were incredible. And they come up against a team that has been the best contested side of the year. They absolutely dominated their last final, the Bulldogs, in that area. So I just can't wait for how hot that first footy is going to be in this first few minutes. It's so important to the Western Bulldogs. They don't just win the contested ball by five or ten. They can win it by 30 or 40 in a game of footy, and it really sets them up. It gets it into their forward half. They love to hold the ball in their forward half. Their best ground ball get team in the competition in the forward half. The only team in the positive. It just shows you the numbers and how they hunt the ball once they get it in there, lock it in there. The danger is they don't want the GWS and winning it back and getting out the back on the fast break here tonight. Lingy, just quickly, what do you think the key will be? Well, the key will be whoever can control that contest that the guys are just talking about. But then the Bulldogs' ability to slow up that long right. GWS ball movement. A lot of aggression early. Yep. A number of players all Up's went up. to their opponents, got stuck into them. You guys said it. This will be a fierce start. Can't wait. All right, we're ready to go here. Prelim final 40. Spotless Stadium. GWS, Western Bulldogs. Rough head jumps over Mumford. Got well over him. Well done out of the middle. Dalhouse got the handball away. Goes up towards Boyd. Davis got rid of him. Dix was tackled by Shaw. And incorrect disposal holding the ball. And Shaw says to Dixon, I'm too quick for you, Play mate. On. Play on. He's been told to go. Heath Shaw just got that under the body. Marked by Johannesson. There's the start the dogs want, though. They get the first clearance, get it into their forward line, force a turnover. Johannesson to go long and deep once again. Got the sit here, up they fly. No winner in the air. Ball sharp hand. Smith was impressive. Give it on to the running Scully. Scully, a high ball over the top. Cameron, fled to Roberts. Got to go back with the ball. Lob, little handball. Green keeps it alive. Lob inside 50. Two on Waiton. Payton, the uh, meat in the sandwich. Well punched away there by the dogs. There was a little snapshot of the game right there. The dogs get it out of the middle, get it into their forward line, but then that transition, the ability of the GWS Giants to get it out the back and get it into their forward line quickly. I loved it. The first bounce, Jordan Ruffin went to shake hands with Mumford. Mumford went and smashed him. Here's Callum Ward, boot to ball, flying shot at goal. Patton had a look at it. Well done, Hamling. It was fascinating. Ruffhead did the sportsman thing, went over, shook Mumford's hand, and Mummy threw an elbow into his chest and said, well, good luck, young man. There's a time for that, Dars, and it's after the game, not before the game. I'm with him. Boundary throw in deep for GWS. Here he is, the two men we speak of, Ruffhead and Mumford. Little kick hands, picking. Dalhouse, his second touch out wide to Johannesson. Johannesson kick is good. Here's Boyd, former star up here. Crowd giving it to him as he handballs off and the dogs are once again to half forward looking for Smith. Hey, Lingy, is it Canilio and Bontempelli going head to head in the midfield there? It certainly is, Richo. Spot on. Canilio's done the job. Not a hard tag. Never has been a hard tag all year for him, but he'll run with him, put defensive pressure into him, but also look to work off Bontempelli and hurt him going the other way. There is the matchup you speak about, and it was won by the Giants. Easton Wood in good position. He was an All Australian half back last year, Easton Wood. The captain tonight with Bob Murphy out, Johannesson. That's an aggressive kick. Back in the middle, Clay Smith had a great final series. The lead up kick was poor over the head of Dixon. And he's sure 
He just reads the footy as well as anyone in the game was in the right spot again. Love that inboard kick though, changed the angle and it opened up the corridor for Dixon. Should have been hit on the lead. Bulldogs have been really brave with their kick through the middle of the ground so far in this final series. It serves them well and this is the one change for the Giants. Reese Palmer back in former Fremantle docker. Yeah, of course Stevie Johnson out suspended. Haynes short ball Tomlinson. Tomlinson from halfback needs to find the target. Smith in front. Gee, misread it there, Morris. Wonder whether he is just a little bit off his game. We saw the activity before the game. Smith goes long and deep. Dobbs. Good mark taken by Roughhead. Really strong. Yeah, Patton just had to try and force that to ground. Can't hit the dog spin it back in the air there. Picken wants to go inside to Delhouse, who's already had an effect on this game. Still wanting to go inside. Funny little kick. Not sure it's the required journey. Umpire pays it. Hamling. Dogs have already cut Roberts Giants is, off three times in the air. Three marks from the opposition already for the Dogs. Roberts to Boyd's. Poor kick. Davis. So both teams have turned it over a little bit early. Just edged Tom Boyd under the footy there, Phil Davis, the co-captain. He started his career at Adelaide Crows. Matty Boyd over the top. Johannes wants a good tackle. And you can hear the Bulldog fans on that part of the ground. They are in fine voice. Liam Pickham. And he's had a great final series as well. Rough head. Mumford give that one to the big man, Mummy. They put a bit of work into Bond and Pelly. I've seen a few Giants on the way past. Just make sure he feels a bit of body. They're going to make sure that he doesn't get any space, the young Bulldog star. He's pushed, he's pushed forward now, Bond and Pelly. Canelio. Pat Paul kicks Mother Dalhouse. Smith. Williams. Able to fend off. Gives it out wide to the highly talented Kelly. Kelly an inside 50 entry. This time Morris in front. Did well against Palmer. Patton saying he presented up there and wanted it short. Only early, but the Giants are winning the contested footy. That's a positive for them. And Cameron looks on. Mumford in front of Roughhead this time, keeping him away from the footy. One by Cornelio, fast hands green, got it wide. Smith trying to get around the skipper in wood, couldn't do so. Peyton, quick hand from the boundary line. Cornelio with the left foot, Nana. First score of the game, GWS. So Dylan Shield there, just disappointed himself, thought he might have been able to steer that one back through. Matty Boyd, an All Australian this year. Third time for Matty Boyd, first time as a defender. Sadly for Eastern Water, put the one mid out, it's like a catcher's mitt that's stuck. Hey, they're out here, the Bulldogs, Dalhouse, running back Boyd, he's going to take some time. Boyd offers a lead, they come in board to Cordy, not a great kick. Play on. Cordy did well to bring it to ground, won his own footy, and now coming through, Clay Smith for the first goal of the prelim final. Clay Smith delivers for the Bulldogs. And the Bulldog faithful up here at Spotless Love it, and it's on. Joel Patful on oh, the train has gone down as well. Let's hope he's okay. Great finish from Clay Smith. Well, he's hurt his ankle that train up, Richo. And he's not happy about it. Well, it was accidental. But that's what they're great at. Ground, ground ball gets in their forward 50. Clay Smith kicks the first goal of the game. Brought the ball to ground, and Smith was in the great position for a handball receive, and he loved it. That's a great story, Clay Smith. We know what he's been through. And then the trainer got bowled over after that as well. Here is Bonham Pally. Ball pin mine. And have a look at this. As you can see, a little bit of push and shove, and the trainer's legs were taken out accidentally by Pat Full. Hurt his ankle, the trainer there. Lost his glasses and his water bottle. It's all happening. Anyone fair game here at the moment? Look at that for a tackle. Whitfield on the top of Hunter. That's it. Hold there, hold there. So the dogs look really good at the moment. Hunter from the middle of the ground. High ball. 
Once again, an opportunity. Boyd straight through the fingers there. It almost falconed him. And now on the counter-attack. This is where you've got to be careful with GWS. They are so good in this position. Ball through the hands of Hopper. A fumble picked up by Hunter. Hunter looked about to go in 50 with a foot to side with a handball. McRae to Smith. Been involved a lot. Boyd, the little turnover handball. Hack forward. This is Hamling. Toby Green slides in, all Australian this year. Palmer, now they're out, Hopper, Callum Ward, former Bulldog, co-captain now, good tackle on him. They jam it forward, the Giants. Dogs have got some numbers back. Patton and Fletcher Roberts, well done. Turned him inside out, good move from the man who's just come back into the side. The Bulldog pressure is outstanding. A few times there you thought the Giants were out, but they just hunt them down. Five touches already for Delhouse, kicking inside, Stringer over the top with a strong mark. Not many teams can hold the Giants up like the Dogs have early here today. Fletcher Roberts sucking in the big one. Stringer, the short ball. Missed the target. Got it to Libra on the half hop, though. He goes across goals. Now Smith is marked. Right on 50, just out of his range. Short little kick to Hunter. Tough little kick this for a left foot up. Fletcher Roberts, the nose, will be escorted off the ground probably. Their pressure's great, and they're just using it a little bit better the other way as we see that hit. Reese Palmer. She was late. On Roberts. And coming off with blood to the nose as a result of that. Here is Hunter, dragged it across the goal. Gee, it was a very, very late bump as Lob marks. Mark, thank you. Stay clear, Jake. What an imposing figure, Rory Lobb is. 206 centimetres, 101 kilos. Speaking to some of the Giants, they feel that he is almost the most important player on their list going forward. He's just miscued that one, the big man. So the Bulldogs will enjoy this repeat inside 50 action. Bit to think about for Leon Cameron. Stay out behind. Play on! Now Biggs spears a low ball in. And well read. He's such a great player, he's sure. Two-time All-Australian last two years. Now they get a little bit of ball out to Scully. Let's see if they can get some transition here. Scully, short ball, horrible kick. Straight down the throat of Eastern Wood, and they want to go and attack here. Misses the man that can do it for you, Johannesson. Beautiful little nose ball. Got it into McLean. McLean, too far out to score. He too goes short and finds Caleb Daniel. Couldn't hold the mark. Well, let's it go, Smith. Tidied it up to Tomlinson, but it's going to come back. They've got it locked in here, the Dogs. McRae to the middle of the ground. Hamlin gets down low. He'll go wider to Boyd, so through the centre square. Now Boyd elects to go long. Big kick. Here comes Bottom Pelly, but in front. Pickin has taken the mark. Tough spot to score from. Heavy left to right. And a difficult kick. Look at Palmer. Well, I think, unfortunately, for Reese Palmer here, he'd be missing the grand final even if the Giants did get through. I reckon he's facing a one-week suspension for that one. Very late. Fletcher Roberts had to go to the bench to get checked out. Gee. He's probably missing for Stevie J anyway, but I reckon he would miss the granny with suspension. Maybe that's why he's playing. Here is Pick, and across the face again, that heavy left-to-right effect on the ball at that end. And yet again, Lob Marks. The Dogs are going at 80% by foot. The Giants, 55. So there's the difference. They're turning it over. They can't get any chains going, and it's staying in the Dogs' forward half. That's a good ball from Rory Lobb. He's had a good look at what faced him. The Dogs really press up. They, they're great at the forward press. Morris came in. Easton Wood will get a play on the ball here, and he did it really well. Bonson Pelly, a little one-two. So to Hunter, over the top to string. It'll come back inside 50 again. Oh, that's a poor kick. He's really miscued that. Mumford the other way. Boyd with courage. And they get through the Giants. Scully had his pocket picked by Matty Boyd. To Bonton Pelly. Squeezing kick. Falling over Phil Davis. Picking. Tomlinson tracking him. He's tried to steer it in front. And he's short. The experience and the class. Well, the runner going over there as well. Everyone falling here at the moment. Biggs tries to get around one in Whitfield. Left foot kick down the line. Davis just smashing it to the line. So everyone gets a chance to draw breath here. The good thing for the Giants here, 10 inside 50s to 5, but they've only allowed one goal in half a quarter. They'll eventually get their game going. Here is the, the dogs' result. pressure is exactly as it has been in the first two finals. Fletcher Roberts from that knock of Palmer. We've heard Lingy's thoughts would miss the grand final. Even if he wasn't going to 
Be there for Stevie J. High ball inside. Dixon falling back. Juggling attempt to mark. Couldn't quite get it. Recovers. Got boot to ball. Somehow he's conjured it up. He's sure. Not sure about it. Dogs fans are. So a bit of a push and shove here. He soars. Eyes have lit Come up on. like golf balls. Go, get out, trainer. Trainer, go. 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 So a heated start to this game. He's sure asking the question of Liver. Make sure you're trying to get So this, is happen this happened after the goal was kicked. Heath Shaw and Liberatore went at it. His eyes were spinning there, Heath Shaw. They both love a scrap, those two. Heath Shaw and Tom Liber. And back in the centre, Ryan Griffin. There's Tony. He's going to be on the edge of his seat watching his young son, who, for all intents and purposes, with a six-week injury, was gone for the Play year. On, Amazing on. courage that... He's out there tonight. The Bulldogs are going to get advantage here. Hunter sends them forward. Oh, Cordy in front. Almost could have marked it. Daniel on the non-preferred. He just shanked the kick badly. And Tomlinson to Davis. They can, under pressure, bomb it forward. But look at this. It's all the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. And that's what they're having to do out of defence. Just hack kicks out of their 50. And the Dogs have just got a wall set up. They're under siege, the Giants. Johannesson wanted to go quick, no one on. Davis there again, this time over the back of Smith. Dixon fast handball to Pickin. Pickin into a dangerous spot here. Bottom belly's there. Great mark taken by Wilson. A really good mark, Nathan Wilson. Handball to Kelly. Kelly to Griffin. Kelly again, so they're having trouble getting out of defence because of kicks like that. Easton Wood! Sensational grab! He's a man, man inspired. He's taken five marks, and this will be his eighth disposal. Clown says the umpire offhand. Scully tried to put it through a little crack there, but guess what? It's going to come back again. The brick wall being set up by the dogs here at the moment. Jeremy Cameron comes up to Len's assistance. Now they've got a pass. Smith looking to drag one player. Went wide to Kelly. Normally a really good kick. No one home. Three on one for the dogs. And Johannesson rips it away from defence again. And finds Easton Wood for mark number six. The captain has had an inspired turn, Richo, as you said. They had John Patton on a hit-up lead and it was ignored and they just went long inside 50 and just had no forward set up the Giants. It was a panic oh. kick. And that's the pressure from the Dogs. You can see they are really looking at that 45-degree kick through the corridor. The Giants on that occasion, well set up. So they have to go long down the line, Cordy. That's his role. Make sure the ball comes to ground. Picking. He's a hard nut land picking. They wrap him up. Umpire letting this one go for a fair while. And, and, and Darcy... Is the hanger from Eastern Wood. What a grab. As you said, he's on fire tonight, the skipper. Right but I love the fact that dogs are prepared to kick long to a contest when there's nothing on so they can set up well defensively behind the ball. But then when there's a chance to go quick with the footy, they're always looking. They're always prepared to go fast with the ball. Whitfield's bump there, Gia. Right in the head. Who was the player that copped it? Josh Dunkley it was. Gee. Head over the footy there. Interesting one as well. So what a intriguing first quarter of footy we're seeing here. Well, the Giants have had an extra man around the stoppage, but it's leaving Easton Wood behind the football, and he's just controlling everything. They need to even that number up, I reckon. Bird's Wood. eye view. Not a bad seat in the house. Sorry, Richo. Yeah, Wood's just the last man in line here. It's going to be tough to get past Play him. On. William's saying he didn't have it. Still going to be penalised though, and so that'll be it. He's saying you dragged it in. Once you drag it in, you must dispose. There you go. Once you drag it in, you must dispose. Watch it. He's telling the umpire Justin Smith to watch it. Let's have a look. So bounces out there, brings it back in there, then it's held to him by the dogs. Then he doesn't have it. He didn't even have it though. And I guess that's the dispute. That's a bit rough. He did drag it in, that's what the umpire saw, but it spilled out immediately. For a third straight here for the Bulldogs and Dunkley. 25 metres out, virtually no angle as you can see. And he's just played with it off the end of the boot rather than kick it. 
Big let off. Just his 16th game of AFL footy, Josh Dunkley. 23 disposals and a goal last week. He's short. And really desperate to get through this zone. Fletcher Roberts has got to push, so they trap them in again, the dogs. And you can see all eyes for the Bulldogs are through the corridor. Roberts in for Matt Suckling tonight. They go long down the line. Davis smacks it forward. Stringer tried to burst through. He got wrapped up immediately. Shill. And it was Davis in there as well. So they won't mind this to Dogs. They love to have time in this forward 50 and just back in their stoppage work. Yeah, they love to own it in their forward half. And they're doing it. I just reckon they've got the edge. And the physicality here at the moment. The Dogs really just trying to serve it up to GWS and every time they kick it out GWS enormous pressure from the dogs is resulting in a contested ball. That was at least a better result for the Giants. It wasn't intercepted. Patton was in the right spot to at least compete and at least get into a situation now where they can get a stoppage. The stat that would be jumping off the page for Leon Cameron would be their kicking efficiency though. In plays like this they just haven't got any clean plays. Going at 40% by foot 42% by foot the Giants that's extremely low. Boyd appealing for the free, the umpire wanting nothing of it. And now Palmer's got it trapped in and under. This is the first time now they might be able to set something up a little bit behind the footy, the Giants. Just haven't had that opportunity at all yet to lock it in there, forward half. Block, Bulldog. So all going the Bulldogs way here at the moment. And GWS not getting any fluid run in their game here at the moment. And the dog's game has been full of it. Tory Dixon is just trying to take Heath Shaw away from the footy. Look at this, into the middle, open square. How Dunkley can have that much space is beyond me. His kick hung in the air a little bit too long, but the numbers work for the dogs. Good Shepherd allowing Morris to pick it up and find the ball out wide to Dixon. He's a dead eye to McRae. Wants to work onto the left boot. This one will go inside 50. Low ball. McLean marks. Brilliant dog play. Heath Shaw zoned off Dixon then. And he kept pushing, and it got switched to the other side of the ground. He gets that mark up on the wing, and that opened it up for them. Good shepherd, wasn't it? Hamlin just allowing Morris that extra half second or so to find the target. And now McLean. Five minutes remaining in the quarter. A kick of somewhat 35 to 40 metres. Hardly a breath of wind here. Across the face, the natural drift of his own kicking style. All clear. From right to left. And they have squandered a few opportunities here, the Dogs. Well, they've had 17 inside 50s to six. So the Giants are very, very lucky the scoreboard looks like it does. Let's have a look at Heath Shaw. Can conjure up from fullback. It's a well weighted kick. This is Wilson. Nathan Wilson, NFL number one for long kicks in 2016. Wants to get it back out the other side here. But again, they set up really well, the Bulldogs. Long down the line. Big Mummy in good position. Ruffhead went back courageously. Callum Ward to keep it in. He did to Whitfield. Now, Libertore tackle just slipped high. And Cornelio has been an outstanding player. You get a chance to settle. Maintain a bit of possession, the Giants. And Callum Ward getting a little reminder for the Bulldog fans that he did leave. A bit harsh, Richo? Oh, perhaps, I think, Luke, yes. You wonder whether we're in Melbourne or Sydney when you hear the boos that loud. We are in Sydney. Oh! And this is the Melbourne Victorian-based team in the Western Bulldogs. That's a very, very ordinary result for the Giants. That has to at least come to ground or out of bounds. So Hamling's kick short as well. Ward strong. So now in a good attacking position. Backwards to Wilson. What can he find in the middle? Here's Scully on the outside. Ran really hard, Scully. Who presents up? No one. So he goes long to a two-on-one. One in front. Push at the back. Free kick, Smith. Up. You got the free. Straight two. Straight. Thank you. Boys. Silly. Mumford loves the contact. A couple of jumper he's there. There's the push. Definite push from Hamling. And so Smith gets the result and look at goal. Roughhead's uh, standing his ground against yeah. Big Mummy though, isn't he? Great to see, Richo. Really good to see. As Smith comes in, kicks the first goal for the GWS. 22 minutes in. 
away. It's still going on okay, there. We're watching both ways. Okay. Ruffhead and Mummy having a real go at each other. That's great, a young player who's really come of age so this year. It comes at you. No problems with the stuff in the chest. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. The high contact is what we need to avoid. So you're, you're, allowed, you're allowed a few little jumperies on the chest then, Darcy. That's good umpire. Very good. I like it. First goal to the Giants. Joel Hamling really didn't need to do that then. Matty Boyd was there to help him. He had the run at the ball. Just got Devin Smith out of the way too, obviously, for the umpire. And the unfortunate thing for the Bulldogs is they're dominating the inside 50, 17 to 7. But they've only got the seven-point lead at the moment. Yeah, it was a big goal against the flow of play. Liberatore in and under. And now Shield tumbles one forward. Boyd, first man to present for the Dogs. Whitfield hands with good. Patton got over the top and then got it free. Toby Green wrapped up. And now Lamb pick and partially smothered kick. It'll favour Wilson. Beautiful pick up. Gee, that was good. Mummy flicks it back to Shield and... They tumble this one for Wilson again. Patton's in good position. He marked this. The general's got it. Take your hat off, Wilson. You. That pick up from ground level. And then he got involved again and got it inside 50. That is elite. You practice that at training. One touch. This pick up here. He got the hands off cleanly. 15 gone now. That was super play. Had a season low five possessions in the final last uh, start against the Sydney Swans, John Patton. But what a great story. Two knee reconstructions at a young age and some fear whether or not a, a man this size is a man mountain would be able to come back. Huge moment. John Patton, a goal he should kick and he makes no mistake. Two in a row to the Giants. So the Orange Army up and about now. John Patton comes from the ground. Good mark. Good contested mark. And a beautiful finish. And Callum Ward, he's the man in the last five or so minutes that's got his team back into it, the Giants, against his old club, the Western Bulldogs. He's really stood up, Callum Ward. So here's the kick from Patton. Got right through it nicely. Celebrated, liked it, and that will inspire his team. In fact, the last two goal kickers in Patton and Smith born on the same day back in 1993. Back in the middle, umpire Matty Nichols, the best bouncer. Have a look how high it goes. Mumford, beautiful palm out the back door. Canelio, intelligent onto Kelly. Kelly, a low ball, dangerous ball inside 50. Roberts met it, shafted off the handball out to Morris. Now Hamling, little kick backwards to Biggs. And Jacob Hall. The dogs reasonably tidy under enormous pressure here at the moment. It's just a one-point ball game to the dogs. Picken over the top, tried to mark it. Williams attacked by Picken. Didn't get boot or hand to it. And so when being tackled, that's a free. Well done to Toby McLean. Didn't rush off and kick the footy away. Held it up, got it back to Picken. Averaging 23 possessions. Booted five goals in the last two weeks. Liam Picken, rough head. That is the part of his game that has seriously improved this young man. Good contested mark. They've got numbers out. Bond with Pelly. It's in good hands. Couldn't quite find Dalhouse. Clay Smith. They're going to go back to Joe Hannison. A lot of numbers back for GWS. Short one to Liberatore. Well done, Haynes. And Dars, that's where Roughhead can get mummy. Push forward and take marks. He's probably got more athleticism. And it was a great lead up the corridor. Probably should have got more out of that. The Bont would normally hit that target to Dalhouse. Keep an eye on Liberatore yeah. and he sure is a bit happening there. He sure seems to have a bee in his bonnet about Liber at the moment. Not oh, sure if there's past up. history there or not, but there's something there. Here's Williams, attacked by three, four dogs. Hunter sliding the handball out wide. Boyd's a good kick, long kick. Not sure he got all of that, and he didn't. So they have squandered some opportunity here, the dogs, early. And the former skipper, they've had 18 inside 50s to nine. Matty Boyd, that's a big differential. Richo, and not the Giants reflected on the scoreboard. The Giants generally have 15 themselves a quarter, so the dogs have got it how they like it. Time in forward half. Just haven't made it count on the scoreboard. So under a minute remaining in this first term. I'm feeling this one is going to go right down to the wire. Bonson Pelly winding it, picking. Good call from the umpire. So no on. man, again, they letting it go. Biggs played it pretty well to himself. Almost Kevin Bartlett style. He puts a high ball up. Giants in good position. In lob over the top. 
Griffin in there, and he's found the boundary. Throw it in, teammate, teammate right there. Tell you what, Lobb's teammate taken right a couple there. of saving marks in defence, nearly took another one then. Yeah, good leap, wasn't it? Really attacks it in the air. So dangerous little patch here, 22 seconds remaining. Dogs forward 50, Mummy. Boyd, go at it. Dunkley there, the tackler. Whitfield went and got the low hard ball. Libba, great handball out to Bonham Pally on his wrong right side. Little handball along the ground to Dunkley, needs to get rid of it, he does. Dalhouse pirouetting out of trouble here. Six seconds and closing, a mark will count. Up they fly and it counts. Smith has taken the mark. Leon Cameron's disgusted and the siren sounds. Jordan. And a bit of rough stuff Jordan. to go with it as well now. The umpire said to rough head before, don't go for the head, okay. keep him at the ball. chest level Jordan. to jump Reese. He's sure in amongst area, everything right. here okay. at the moment. But a free kick after the quarter time siren to Smith. Directly in front. 20 metres out and he has missed that as well. Got the jittery jitteries and here come GWS from everywhere just to let him know about it. This has been on all quarter. There's been jitteries every which way you look. In this case, Lob and Cordy. And this has got fire written all over it. Dogs here at quarter time by two points, 2-3-15 to GWS, 2-1-13. Ward and Eastern Wood was very impressive off half-back. Lingy. Well, BT, you're right. It was tough, hard football. And what the Western Bulldogs did so well throughout that first quarter was pressured the Giants. They had them going at about 40% kicking efficiency halfway through that first quarter. They've got to keep that up. They can't let the Giants get their game going. They moved the ball too well, these Giants, as they did late in the first quarter then. They need to keep it up. So underway here in the second quarter. Ruffhead's had a really good start to this game. He's jumped over Mumford pretty regularly. Toby McLean, well done, Haynes. He just reached over. Hold there, Toby. Super brilliant defensive Hold. mark. Play on. Classy player, Nick Haynes. It's a Whitfield. There's more class. Hold He's there, got to run Thank around. You. It was Cornelio who wanted it. They cut back through yeah. to Callum Ward, as which I said is been the one that looks like the most like. That's a dangerous ball chopped off. Johannesson had a good play on it. Well done, Williams. Smashed through the other way, and Kelly emerges with Gee, it. Gee, what a hard ball win that was by Williams. Off hands, Hamling. Under pressure. Smother off the boot green. So good at that. Run to the open goal. That's typical GWS play. Terrific stuff, Toby Green. Let's go! Smothered and kicked the goal, but gee, it was a gutsy kick from Callum Ward into the middle, and it was Zach Williams who approached the ball so hard at ground level that got it going their way. Take your hat off to Zach Williams, coming off half back, won the ball in the middle, created that opportunity forward. That was as hard as it gets. Here's the smother from Toby Green. Outstanding. It's what you want your small forwards doing. But it was Zach Williams in the middle of the ground that should get the goal assist there. He was outstanding. That's why it's great if you can get it onto your non-preferred straightaway, Richo, isn't it? Yeah. Instead of straightening up. Yeah, he's the All-Australian half forward, Toby Green. He's a complete player. Now the Dogs win the clearance. They get it out to Pickin. He can go all the way here. Pickin takes a bounce. Gets himself within range. And then a really strange kick. He just... Miscued it completely. Yeah, he didn't quite nail it. Miscued it. The correct wording, oh. Das, for sure. Normally would have got some altitude on that. It would have sailed through. So the dog's looking rather jittery, I've got to say, once inside 50 and looking at scoring. Any other part of the game seems to be OK. GWS game at the moment, Richo. I reckon it's building. That is, yeah. They're definitely getting into the game now. They're getting it moving their way a lot better than that first quarter. Griffin. Roughhead Play doesn't on. look too good. Now he collapses there, Roughhead. The biggest thing here for the Giants is Play contested on. footy is dead level. Gee, I wonder whether that's sort of, some sort of delay there, Richo. The footy hit Roughhead that hard in the face. It, it might have concussed him. It well, was... it does look like it could be exactly that, Das. Sometimes it can get you in the eye and you just lose all vision. Watch this. That... Is a oh, flat out Falcon. He's right. staying out. He wants to stay yeah, out there. Right. I think you're right. More eye than 
than head, I think, but he's probably going to come off just to find himself a little. And I think the under umpires are indicating this is the blood rule. No, they're not. They're throwing it straight back in. I wonder why they waited then. Beautiful palm by Mumford. Here's an opportunity for GWS. Zach Williams clearing ball around the corner. High ball to half forward. Getting back there is Roberts. Being held a little by Lobb. Green. And up and on handball. Patton's got to attack it. McRae was there as well. Toby yeah. Green starting to get involved, BT. He is so important. That link player at half forward. Here's the smother again. Gee, that would have hurt. He's come off the ground. I think he's going to be okay, but he'll be off for a few moments. Green's starting to get involved, though. Very important at half forward. Cornelio boots a ball. It's chopped off by oh. Tom Boyd. Ordinary handball, that one. Now yeah, they've got to work really hard. So Kelly, I think, at the bottom of that pack. Cornelio, Hunter. They did well to win a little 50-50. And then Caleb Daniels, been it's a little jittery so far in this match, having played a couple of big finals. And there's Jordan Ruffhead. It's going to take the jumper off and... Just compose himself about yeah. where he is. I agree with you, Das, on Caleb Daniel. Hasn't been his normal, reliable self here at the moment. Boyd, quick handball, Dunkley goes forward to the footy. McLean, he's a real scrapper. There with Wilson likewise. Haynes to Wilson. Around the corner, high ball. Just trying to get it as far away from the goals as possible. Griffin knocks it forward. Sharp handball by Dunkley. Out in front of Hunter. Here's Daniel, oh, the man we speak of. Advantage paid. Screwing, centering ball. Looking for Stringer. Drop the mark. Patful applying the pressure. In they come from every which way. And in the end, it may well be a ball up inside the dog's 50, which is a win for them, I would have thought. Thanks, lads. Yeah, they won't mind that chaos ball at ground level. The Bulldogs it. Right back. Suit the way they've been playing throughout this final series. Fisted forward. My art, my art. And Hunter. Fresh air, swing at it. Here's Daniel trying to work his way into the game. The little man with the helmet. And again, the pressure too great. He's popped it out of bounds on the full. Just got to settle now, Caleb Daniel, a little bit. As you guys said, a bit fumbly. Even then, just desperate to try and get a kick and a touch of the footy under oh, his God. belt. He probably didn't need to try and kick that one then and put it out on the full. Maybe just force it out of bounds. Well done by Marcus Bond and Pally, chopping the ball inside that Bulldogs forward line again. That's all they've got to do. Keep doing the simple things really well. Keep giving themselves opportunity to kick those goals. Well, Bond and Pelly didn't commit to Davis in the pocket. He sort of half-carded it. He did it so well and spoiled Heath Shaw. Just looking at Roughhead there, I just wonder whether the concussion thought is there for the medical staff and whether it may be a 20 minutes. Go down and find out shortly. Kelly, lovely hands to Shaw. He knew the boundary was what he wanted. Now, that has to be deliberate. Umpire Smith, one of the very best, says, yes, it is. Back here. So, Roughhead not preparing to come back on. That's Dr Zimmerman sitting on his right, on his left. And I think that may well be a suspect concussion there. So, that... Means you'll have 20 minutes, PT. As a minimum. Yeah. And then they make a decision after that. Now, you've got another one here. Is that Callum Ward? I think he might have got kneed in the head here. Jeez. I think he may have got kneed in the head, Richo. Yeah. In the marking contest. Let's, Let's have, have a look. look. From the back. This is oh, not yeah. right to the side. Gee. That's almost like the boxer's perfect punch oh. to the jaw that knocks players out. Yeah. And, and I don't think... No, I think stopped. he's out. That's so, not good at all. Oh, oh. That, that yes. is almost the sweet spot for concussion, and he's got one of the hardest heads. He wants to get up. Look at him. He's, yeah, he's tough as nails. Have a look at his leg out the back. He doesn't know where he is. They're trying to remove his mouth guard at the moment. He was affectionately known as Cemented in his time at the Bulldogs because he was just such a hard player. So remember, if you are deemed to be concussed, and that goes for this man as well as this man, then you cannot take any further part in the game. It's a protocol that the medical department have adopted. That's flush on the draw, as Das described, the old boxer's knockout. And this is not good. We may well have a stretcher here. Yeah, the trainers are just running out the neck brace now, BT, so I would assume they'll get the stretcher out here as well. He's in the best of hands right now, Callum Ward. They are so good, the AFL medical staff now protecting the players making sure he doesn't move and they protect the neck. Right. He's in an awkward position because he's lying face down there. Normally they're on their back and it's easier to do that. But looks like he's going to get up. They're giving him a moment or two here to compose himself. But that is a big accidental knock to come back from. 
There was an accidental knee from Zane Cordy coming the other way. And I reckon there'd be some real issues with his jaw there. Look, that was that was flush on his jaw. I'm and just wondering about Jordan Ruffhead's eye, uh, BT. Sometimes the point of the football hits you in the eye and you literally can lose vision in it. And I've seen players miss four or five weeks with a serious eye injury. And you can just see that... I wonder whether he's, as Ward comes off, whether he's disappointed in the decision yeah, that's been made not to put him back on or whether down. he is feeling a bit back, funny. In, in through the field of play. Look and at that. The gate, Doesn't a pitcher off. tell the story there? And he's almost trying to get back out. That's how brave and tough Callum oh, Ward no. is. So, Gee. Great to see him come off under his own steam. Co-captain of the Giants, Callum Ward. He was a young star of the Bulldogs. So now we're back. With play, Shield clearing kick. Biggs had a good look at it. Now the Bulldogs reload again. Eastern Wood. That's a horror kick. Oh. Zach Williams. Super Thank player, Zach Williams. Yeah, they've just butchered the ball going inside 50 so far this quarter, the Western Bulldogs. So the rule for concussion is once you're taken off and you're suspected of concussion, it's an automatic 20 minutes. And then after that, it's the doctor's decision. Here's Mumford. Davis. Under pressure here is Kelly. Dixon got him in the tackle. Play on. Advantage paid. Smith into an open goal. Smith has kicked two goals. And the crowd jump out of their seats. Here at Spotless. Could have, could have kicked three goals. Play Smith. Gee, that's uh, massive goals and mistakes made by the Giants in their back 50. Just pressure again, unrelenting pressure from the Dogs. So there was the handball to Kelly, which just put him under extreme pressure. And then the Dogs swarmed in and kicked a very easy goal. So Callum Ward out, rough head out at the moment. A couple of big moments in this game. Brilliantly done, Shield. Speed and athleticism to Griffin, the former Bulldog captain. The handball just a little too tall for Scully. Whitfield, two of the best aerobic players in the game. And that inside-out reverse torque found Cornelio. He's got a man out the back who's got a good look at it. Toby Green got off his man. And they'll get the quick reply here, you think, the Giants. That kick from Whitfield had looked awkward on his left leg, but that was deliberate. He knew exactly what he was doing. Thanks, and that broke everything open. If he didn't nail that kick in seconds. board, this wouldn't have happened here for Toby Green. That was a leap from Whitfield. 42 goals for the year. That man on screen there, Toby Green. 44 assists to go with it. He's an enormous Three. defensive player. Three. One of the best years we've seen as a permanent half forward. For the quick reply, Toby Green, no mistake. He's got two. Yep. Well, two in the quarter to us. He's the player. He, he's a real barometer at half forward. Permanent half forward. Gets up the ground. But got a great goal sense. Knows how to find space inside 50. He only had two disposals at quarter time. Already had three this quarter and two goals. Straight back. There's been a few late hits in this game. Is this one of them? Not head high. Probably okay there, there Eastern Wood, I would have thought. Glancing yep. blow and Whitfield was didn't, okay. Didn't hurt him. So, two goals to GWS in the quarter. One to the Dogs. GWS by just four points. Leg. Shield. Advantage. Leg. Advantage. Advantage paid. Heard the umpire clear call. Now Wilson to finish it off. The entry inside 50 is a high ball. In comes Patton. Up they fly. The punch away was good. Over the head of Daniel. Then again, most things are. Little ball out the back here. Now comes to Wilson. This time the chipping ball is better. And Palmer, I think it is, takes the mark. Runs around onto his left boot. Driving ball into the square at the back. Patton juggling at Tim Scully. Handball Griffin ripped out of his hands by Pickham. Now he's got to get rid of it. And free kick dogs a little lucky. The worrying sign for the Bulldogs at the moment is that the Giants are getting their hands on the footy and the runners are starting to run and get out the back and get those threatening balls. That's what the dogs have got to stop. They did it well in the first quarter. But just feel like the Giants at the moment 
They're starting to get their legs going. They're winning contested possession. Back that up, Lee, which the dogs have dominated all year. Brave kick, more play on the call, and he got wrapped up immediately by Duckley. That's, That's a big moment. Dixon will be out too. They've got a player out, Dust. And they haven't seen him. Duckley's missed it. They're going to go sideways. They're still surging ahead here, the dogs. Johannesson, who take on Davis, you would have thought, out to the left footed McRae. Lead up target to Dixon, who was the loose player, and they eventually found him. Well, they never, he never got picked up. He was inside 50 forever on his own, and he's a natural forward. He knew when to time his lead. And that was a big turnover, this in the middle of the ground. That play on there just wasn't on. Just didn't have any awareness there at all, Haynes. And it could be costly with Dixon, who is normally a pretty good shot at goal. Well, he's kicked 83 goals, 26 in the last two years. Richo, he had some nervous kicks at goal in the final against Hawthorne last week, but technically, this man is one of the better kicks in the game. We're right behind him on this one. Let's have a look. Tory Dixon kicked the goal in the first quarter, and he bends it back right to left. And the Bulldogs kick back. They're in front. So a nice finish from Tory Dixon. He would come off the interchange bench when that holding the ball was made in the middle of the ground and he was just out forever. Eventually they found him. And it's going goal for goal here. Terrific contest. Not a bad seat in the house here at Spotless Stadium. And not a bad game of footy either. Two sides going goal for goal here in the second quarter. Two-point lead with the Dogs. Dixon kicked his second. Five lead changes already in this game. Yep. Bonson Pelly hasn't had a clearance yet. Only six disposals. Here he is now. Running over the top foot was Boyd. Now Hunter's got it all to do. Kelly with a tackle. Just shoveling it out the back door. Libba needs to get rid of it. He does. Taken away from him. Here's Griffin. Sponges it out the back. Scully. Fast handball shield. Nice and cool he was as he gets it to Haynes. And Haynes is normally a good yeah, kick. Scully in the foreground there. Cop one. Free kick, is it? Oh. So Haynes at half back to send it down the line. Spectacular night for footy. Up they fly. Off hands, Bonham Pally. Handball, kept the arms free. In there was Delhouse. Had a good start to the game. Hasn't been sighted much since. Libba, great little handball, McLean. There's the Johansson, the overlap bigs now. Little bullet ball in the centre forward. Need to mark it in the Dukes there. Dunkley tried to take it on the chest. And a free kick will go the way of Whitfield at centre back. How good were the dog's hands at half back though? That's that handball we've heard about all week. It's Toby Green wants it out the back. Now Morris has got the match up now. They might try and find Morris on Green a bit more often. He's such a damaging player, Richo. Jeremy Cameron has only had the one disposal, one handball so far. Got to try and find a way to get him into the game. He was the so man good yeah, in that first final. The day out, Jeremy Cameron. So Bonapelli, he will get his first clearance. Half back, he holds on to it. Daniel. And some poise shown by the Bulldogs to McLean. Yeah, they're going to work through a bit of heat here. Back to McLean. They might have overdone it. Good pressure from the Giants. Morris back to McLean. He's gone. Reese Palmer got him. Advantage. Advantage paid. Smith can go for home here. Launches from 50, but much to the delight of the Dog fans. Out of bounds on the full. Good pressure by the Giants. Even the Dogs' elite hands couldn't get out that time. Boyd. Dalhouse should have probably kept going down the middle. Lost a little bit of time. McRae now. Dalhouse again. They wax. Now McRae wants to get onto the left. Driving ball. Pickens got to go. Big collision possible. Wilson went into no man's land there and did it nicely and bravely. What he did was come off his direct opponent, Dixon, and give Heath Shaw a massive chop out. What a great kick from Wilson. Biggs is going to be happy to see that one over for a boundary thrown right through the interchange race in front of our commentary position here. So the Giants have started to get their game going a little bit more. Their ball use is better in this second quarter. Darcy's rough Just head's having a look at there. Roughhead's eye, it's got that black look in it, which worries your vision wise. McLean flicked it out. Caleb Daniel almost didn't take possession, but managed to squeeze it forward for Wilson. Didn't see Pickin coming, and he got wrapped up and nearly gone. 
kick and asking for the little jumpery there. It's been spiteful. Wilson's given uh, Piggin a little one, not with too much contact, but he could have got a free kick for too high against him there. He's got to be careful. Boyd did well. Yeah. Dalhouse inside 50. Look at the one-on-ones down there. Four of them. Davis was there. Umpire lets it go. Bonham Pally in under this. Haynes there with him. And we just saw a shot on Roughhead there before. Now, if it is, let's go. just take a look at Wilson Boys, here with the jumpery. There it is. Bang. Well, that's yeah, a little bit silly. Gee, you would hope they've let jumperies go all year. Normally they've been a fine. But that one had a little bit of a little bit of jaw about it. Here's Hunter. Out the back. Smith. Left foot. Snap. Smith's got three. He's wrapped the doggy supporter. Clay Smith's putting together some sort of final. Should have four, Richard. Yeah, kick three and missed an absolute sitter on the siren at quarter time. Should have four. He's had 12 disposals and he's causing them all sorts of issues inside court 50. Got to tighten up on him. Just well. had no touch on him at all there. And he was able to run. A little loop around the back of that stoppage with no body contact on him at all. Clay Smith doing the number 14. Proud there, Luke Darcy. Yeah, he sure is. Returning from three knee reconstructions. Amazing courage. What a player he's become. No Stringer taking a turn in the middle of the ground. Now Shield taken off, yeah. but they jam it forward through Kelly. In front was Morris. And now this is Hamling. Just trying to get it over the line. And they're going to get away with one here, the Bulldogs. See the Giants almost appealing for deliberate out of bounds. Jakey Stringer, two disposals. Jeremy Cameron, one. Both teams would love to try and get something out of those two. You have to get Stringer, more of an impact player than a possession collector. But I agree, he needs to get more involved, Richo. Well, he's up around this stoppage now, sitting off the back of it. So he's coming up there to try and lose them. Just get himself involved around yeah. a stoppage. Nine minutes remaining in the half. Three goals to the dog in the dogs in this quarter. There he is. Speak of the devil. Little one wide. Speaking about Jared Ruffhead. Jordan Ruffhead. Jordan yeah. Ruffhead before. If it is a concussion, as you see, Callum Ward, Jordan Ruffhead due to come back on at the 24 minute mark of this quarter, or now at the 20 mark. And if Ward comes back on under the concussion 20 minutes, can't come back on until the 30 minute mark of this quarter. Here's Smith. Gathered the ball in nicely. Left foot ball. Bonham Pally one on one with Davis. Keeps the front position. Now Tomlinson arrives. Overran the footy. Davis did well. Socket it out. Clearing kick for the moment. Scully picked it up. Biggs got him in the tackle. Nice handball to Patful. Did really well there, Tom Scully. Clean hands under pressure. Now it's the Giants. We're going to try and slingshot the other way. We've got numbers out here. Big Rory Lobb. He's got to get it moving quickly, though. Just hung onto it a bit too long, Richo, and now tries to steer one short. There's Patton. So now they've just got to be smart with their ball use. The dogs have got numbers back got now. Three metres. Three metres. Big Mummies just having down. almost to think about the journey. John Patton, he's a big kick. Will take his very best effort, but I reckon he's just sizing it up. John Patton hasn't missed a game since round one. Now unloads a massive bomb. He's connected all the way and touched on the line. That's a couple of centimetres away from a massive goal. Well done to Boyd. That's his job. He's the ruckman. He's got a big job to do with rough head off the ground. And he got down on the line and got a touch on it. That's really good from Boyd. Saw Callum Ward arriving back on the bench there before as well. So if he comes back on, I'd be incredibly surprised given his injury. The other issue for the Bulldogs is Tom, injury. Tom Boyd is having to do a heap of minutes in the ruck. He would not this year have spent anywhere near the amount of time that's going to be required of him now with Ruffhead off the ground as well. Good kick by Cordy to McLean. McLean right in front of the Dogs in a change. See the three GWS players waiting to come back on the ground as the Dogs go forward. This time Mumford goes up uncontested. Wants to get it out the side door, and he does. Tomlinson and Scully can raffle it. Tomlinson says to Scully, you go. Now the kick wide. Good ball here, Patton. Marks half back. Nothing really down the line here, Smith, but... Oh, the dogs, dogs are defending it well, BT, the ground. 
It's a good switch though to Heath Shaw, who's the man they love to get the ball in his hands because it kicks like that. Whitfield's a beautiful user as well. They've got some openings here. Toby Green stuck out the back. Beautiful kick. Always oh, stuck the boot up. And in doing so, missed the footy, Toby Green. I reckon he was more interested in the kick yeah. than he was the mark. And Easton Wood, he wasn't happy with what Toby Green was up to there. Well, he tried to protect the space with putting his foot up and forgot about marking it. Bounced off Mummy's head, Whitfield, Scully. They get their hands free. Now the dogs, can they slingshot from half back? There's no one forward, so this wide handle was the right option. Gets it out to the running machine that Johannesson is. Cuts back in the middle. Little high ball, not his best kick. Caleb Daniel tried to jump over the top of a couple. Whitfield handle, intercepted by Bottom Pelly. 35, closing misses. Six minutes remain in the half. Dogs by eight points. Have a look at this. So the Did foot went up to protect the space to mark the footy, but took his eyes off it at the last second. Yeah, nothing illegal in that. Oh, truly within the rules. He's one slap back. Now Biggs tumbles one forward. Liam picking the goal square. Griffin came across courageously. Now a 50-50 ball to be won. Williams, he's a gutsy player and he did well. Had some risk about it, but he decided to take them on and... Now it might be the Giants back the other way through Big Mummy. Mummy, a little trip over the top. Oh boy! Lobs tripped over himself. Crowd loving it. He blames the shoelace. I'm not so sure. That's little, a missed opportunity. They had numbers out then. A little embarrassing. Not ideal. Right. Centre wing, neutral ground here. Same Cordy having to take a turn in the ruck now to. Give Tom Boyd a spell. Shield. Swift handball, but put Kelly under pressure. And that is deemed not deliberate. Darcy mentioned Zane Cordy now taking his turn in the ruck. Surely the GWS giant midfielders, they'll get on the move now. They'll get really proactive knowing that Mumford will dominate in there. Yeah, they'll really try and take advantage of that. Johannesson slides in for the Bulldogs. Griffin lurking. It was Biggs with... A tumbling left footer. Dale Morris, Pat Full, Haynes, good hands to Wilson. They work their way through a bit of trouble, and now Lockie Whitfield starting to find a fair bit of the footy. Okay. Haven't kicked a goal for a while, the Giants. Are you sure he loves this role. Likes to go back and quarterback style set them up from centre half back. Yeah, 14, 14 minutes. Yeah, they just haven't looked like finding a target inside 50 this quarter. Scully around the corner, high ball. Gee, Jeremy Cameron had Morris and uh, Roberts in a really good position there. Biggs, handball, McRae just got rid of it in the nick of time. Dalhouse straightens, goes down the wing. Kick is very, very low. Mark is paid to Hunter. Only one mark each team inside 50 this quarter. It's incredibly okay. tough to find targets inside 50 in this game. Play on. Play on. So Lockie Hunter. Has to move it on, he does just that. High ball on the head of Boyd. McLean in front, let go of the ball. He'll need to make an attempt here. Ball said it was pinned by Jeremy Cameron, umpire Matthew Nichols. Three umpires today, Matthew Nichols, Justin Smith and Simon Meredith. Just feel like the dogs are on the verge of kicking a couple of quick goals here. Scully, the other way to Whitfield. And look at the running power of those two. Jeremy Cameron's been quiet. Whitfield links up again and... They are so dangerous. Look at the runners come through, Griffin. Out the back, Patton wants it. The kick is going to favour him. Oh, well done, Hamling. Patton will pick it up and kick a goal. The big man. Giants get a big goal against the runner play. Yeah, it just felt like the dogs were on the verge, kicking a couple of goals. And the Giants get the break the other way. We haven't seen that all game. From half back, they had a chain, the length of the ground that ended in John Patton and a much needed goal. Finally, they found a bit of space inside Ford 50. The first time they've been able to spread away from a stoppage like that and kick a goal from half back. So, a good goal by GWS, locking Whitfield, carrying the footy. Haven't seen that though all night. From a stoppage at half-back, a chain all the way down to Patton and kicks a goal. Pretty well. First time they got through that dog's pressure. Typifies them at their best, doesn't it, Richo? Mumford knocked forward oh, here. Oh. Scully trying to keep it rolling. Fortunate bound here to Picken. Picken under the pump. 
Handball wide, it comes Dalhouse. Tried to get through, Whitfield took him forward in the tackle. In the back, Bulldogs. Free kick, Dalhouse. 3.35 remaining in the half. Handball to Wood, spearing ball to Dixon. Mark, here, hey. Mark should back be on here. 50. And this will be very, very tight for Dixon to be able to get the journey from here. Time back on. Important that he kicks it high and gets the altitude, gives the handball off, not confident to the running Johannesson. He launches from 50 metres out. Has he got it over the top? No. Minor score only. Wasn't a bad option, though. Seen Johannesson get handballs in that position before. Oh, another one. That time into the side of the head. Smashed into Johannesson's head. And these are important minutes now. 3.15 remaining in the half. Three points to the margin. I just get this overwhelming sense that it's going to come down to the wire. Lob. He's taken a lot of contested marks this year. McRae got in lower and harder and drew the free kick. Let's go straight up. A lot of numbers back. Straight back. Tom Scully telling him to get up. Gee, there's some feeling in it. So they can see some ground here, the dogs. You can go laterally here to Biggs, Richo. Matty Boyd's just come off the bench as well, but... Going to go inside 50. Oh, it's an awkward bouncing ball for the Giants defenders now. Whitfield, there's a Bulldog down. McLean, who looks really sore behind play. Clay Smith, he's kicked three goals. Tried to burrow his way through Griffin. He's strong in the hips. And Kelly clears. Only as far as Biggs. That player, Toby McLean, it's almost going to hit him here. With the umpire, could blow the whistle. He lets it go. Caught his kick. So the umpire still prepared. Let it go. Play on the call. Davis dropped it. Libertore's tackle was strong. They get back in, Haynes. The cleans up. Oh, they just taken the wind out of him, Richo. Oh, yeah. Straight back here, boys. I'm coming back. All right. All the numbers are around this contest as we see Stringer, who's been quiet. Cracks in hard. Mumford in there as well. Patful over the top. And he's taking a fair bit of skin off uh, Toby yeah, McLean. Have a look at this. Okay. Yeah, the stops there. Excellent doesn't tickle. Where's Clay Smith? He's been dangerous in these situations. Got some touch on him this time. McRae is against the man you call Richo. He's got four goals in the first half. And that is a big moment for the Bulldogs. Oh, big goal that one. He's sure not happy. And I hate conceding goals from stoppers inside 50 coaches. And that will be very disappointing. And look at he's sure going up his head. That's four goals for Clay Smith. That's a career high. And he is the man down there. How did he find space again around this stoppage? He had to be bodied up. Clay Smith goal was big there for the Bulldogs on the move from this stoppage. Read it beautifully, finished perfectly. What a big half he has had. Heath Shaw after it has absolutely given it to his teammates. Just let him know that he's not happy with the way they've set up. Be interesting to see how they respond. Not every player handles a spray well. Will they go back into the boxes or will they respond to what Heath Shaw has given them? So now the Giants through Wilson. Ryan Griffin, who's a power athlete, Ryan Griffin. Drives this one to Toby Green direction. Back with the flight. Dale Morris, as courageous as anyone out there. No issues with him going back to Dale House. And at 35, counting to half time. Massive uh, minute and a half here for the Giants. <coughs> Cannot concede. Good ball to Caleb Daniel. The little man has not really had any impact. And he's, and he's such a great decision maker. Just got the better of him so far this final. Hold there. Wilson. Tomlinson wanted it at the other side. They come back to lob. Short one to Haynes, and so it's been absolutely ferocious this final. The players just soaking in a little bit of time to cool their jets. It's a good ball from Lobb. In fact, it's been broken up. Chance for Hunter and Bonson Pelly. Oh, well done. The Giants held it up. It might be holding the footy. It will be dragged back in by Scully. Drag the ball in. Dive on it. Drag it in. Giants rushing to get back now. He's short, trying to get his teammate organised down there. 
Bontempelli, he'll be told there's only 30 seconds to go. The runner's out there. Stay Get it in. Dale. Give their forwards Dale. a chance. So he's got the instructions, Lee, as you said, that there's not much time. They go to the big pack. And all oh, Clay Smith again it was. I think nearly took a massive mark. Lobs handball. Devin Smith confronted by Liberatore. Roberts picks it up. He missed Eastern Wood with a tackle. Below the knees. GWS, time on. So the free kick for contact below the knees and Cornelio, and they're out over the back here. GWF handling didn't get there in time. They had runners out the back, and handling came over the top and saved the day. The halftime siren will beat the Bulldogs. Electric atmosphere here. And it's the Bulldogs with a nine point half time lead. He's sure he's animated. A lot to think about. There's been two massive incidents in the first half. We need to have a look at Callum Ward, we think, has been knocked out cold. You're watching Finals Footy on Fox. Brought to you by Ultra Tune. Ward being the operative word because they've been going down like nine pins. And it's tough as you would expect in a knockout preliminary final. Just a nine point ball game. Great to see a good, tight, close tussle. And by gee, it's tough. It's tough, but it's darn good to watch, Jason. We thought it might have started as an arm wrestle. It's still an arm wrestle. We actually have no idea yeah. who's going to gain the ascendancy as yet in this game. I think it's been a really attractive first half. It's been hard. Teams have made mistakes under pressure, but every now and then the game's just opened up for a little passage. Yeah, yeah you're right. Certainly uh, the Bulldogs dominated early. Mm. Uh, it looked very similar to last night's yeah. game, didn't they? <laughs> However, GWS were able to kick a couple of settling goals late in the first quarter and stay in it. But the Bulldogs could be further in front, and they've been fantastic. And I think I think the Giants haven't really coped with the pressure coming in as a heavy favourites lynching. No, they certainly haven't, and they really struggled on the outside to start with. We saw a number of their good ball carriers not touching the ball early. Certainly Whitfield and Scully was another one, mm. Griffin. But they're starting to get themselves slowly into the game. But you're right, the margin could be a lot greater to the Western Bulldogs. Uh, um, 11 scoring shots to, uh, to 7 doesn't reflect their true dominance. A number of big names have been relatively quiet in the first half and Clay Smith oh. is emerging as an unlikely hero. Best on by the length of the, the straight, straight at the moment. Very good final Andy. series. Yeah. A great final series. Yeah. All right, let's go to the Ultra Lab. Kingy and Jared, how did you see the first half? Well, the Giants are a great counter-attack team, the best ball movement team in the competition, but they've been shut down. The, the, the blockade, you called it, Bevo's blockades, worked absolutely brilliantly. They've scored seven points out of their defensive half when they averaged 40 per game. So it's, it's been a big, big tick. I think they're lucky to be still in it, the Giants. Mm. Uh, Western Bulldogs have butchered a number of opportunities. They keep on coming. They've uh, made He's Shaw accountable. Tory Dixon doing a really good job on him. Delhouse. Excellent through the middle. And the Bont has only really just started to get going. So they're looking pretty good. The Dogs, uh, the job in front of the Giants. Yeah, really looking forward to the second half. But let's go back to the start of the game, at least early on. Wonderful smother here. And Lob went flying over the top. And could have badly injured his leg, but he was quite OK. Clay Smith, we mentioned, as an unlikely hero. Uh, he's amongst the goals and gets an early one here for the Dogs and is absolutely wrapped. The little left foot stab makes no mistake there on the board. Yeah, Tory Dixon continued the good start for the Bulldogs. One against two, two of them on their feet. He was on the ground and yet he somehow bounces up, picks up the ball and kicks the goal and continues that great start. Easton Wood took five or six marks in the first quarter. This was the best of them. It just took a... He hung there and had to reach right back for it. It looked really, really good. And then after a really quiet start, Jonathan Patton started to come into the game. He took a strong mark and went back and kicked truly for the Giants. Yeah, that's right, Jason. A quarter time, the Dogs were in front by two points. Should have been further in front. They missed a couple of real sitters in that first quarter. We just have a look at this one, though. Toby Green's goal with a fantastic smother there against Joel Hamling trying to cross it. Across his goal, he's been fantastic, Toby Green, all night. Have a look at this for oh. a Falcon. Ooh. Rough heads night, he's finished. It looks like it's an eye injury, not a concussion. Was ruled out without even going downstairs. And then we see here a heavy concussion by Cullen Ward, who was knocked out there, spent quite a few minutes on the ground before walking off to his own accord. Interesting to say, I'm not sure he'll be allowed back out in the field. No, then after the break, here's a turnover in the back half. Defensive 50, good pressure from the Dogs. And then Clay Smith wanders in, kicks a little check side as he runs in the goal. That's his second. And once again, 
The Bulldogs looking very dangerous, starting to get a bit more efficient going inside 50. And Dixon goes back and slots one from 35 and his second goal. And at half time, nine points to the favour of the Bulldogs and looking very comfortable. Well, certainly the fans are excited in the grandstand. Yeah, 11 scoring shots effective to seven. Patton's got two, Green's got two. And four, of course, to Clay Smith, who's having a wonderful day. Dalhouse picked up 15, Clay Smith 15. Kelly's got 16 disposals and Scully coming into the game with Wilson for the Giants. Well, at the start of our program today, Dermot Brereton wanted scratch and bash and... Well, he's got everything. He's got people knocked out. He's got eyes. They're going to have to be patched up. Your wish has been granted, Dermot. We've got the casualty ward, haven't we? And that's where he is at the moment. I can't see him coming back on. Being here at ground level, I fear for him that that was a big click, click snap there. And I, I fear for him that he might be done. If he comes back on somehow, this bloke is Hercules. Yeah, well, it was a great effort for him just to get up and walk off the ground, considering what he was going for. It was right in front of where I was sitting, Derm, and they put a lot of work into him, the doctors and physios down there, just trying to obviously protect his neck. But they uh, they got him up and walked him off the ground. So we wait to see what happens now with Callum Ward. What we're seeing here is, and, and Jason said that... Uh, um, uh, Clay Smith's best on the ground yep. by, by a street. He is. He's the most effective player on the ground. One thing I'm noticing at ground level here is when the ball hits the deck and it's a ground level ball, it is the doggies first in there for the scrap up and they are really strong over the footy. They feed it out, but the Giants aren't to be denied. They're pretty physical as well, as we've just seen. But the doggies have first dibs on probably three out of four ground level balls that are really, really hardly contested. And the Giants have held up with the amount of repeat entries that the Bulldogs are getting inside forward 50. Look, Jake Stringer's had a quiet night so far, but the amount of numbers with repeat entries going back in his way hasn't really suited. So if it opens up a little bit more, look for Jake Stringer to have an impact in the second half. Thank you, boys. We'll check in with you again later. But you mentioned the casualty ward, so let's head to a Fox Footy newsroom and join John Ralph. Let's have a look at the casualties. First up, Callum Ward. Oh, Sandy, how about the collateral damage? Now, Callum Ward is done for the day under the strict AFL uh, concussion protocols that prevent people from coming back from exactly these type of hits and this kind of symptom. Now, an accidental hit to the head from Zane Cordy, it flushed him. You can see the concern for the, from the GWS Medicos. Now, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be structural damage, so whether there's uh, a chance that he would get back for a grand final but he had his tracksuit uh, top on in the last couple of minutes when you are wobbling like that you do not get back on the ground he's only missed five of 112 games for GWS in their uh, time in the competition they're just not used to playing without their spiritual leader the, the last 20 minutes of evidence was not great about that so they'll rally to the cause but he will not be back today uh, Brownie you've copped a few of those but uh, <laughs> the, the wobbly legs told the story there he wasn't going to go yeah back. The wobbly legs so he's not bleeding in the mouth though which tells you he probably hasn't broken his jaw which is a good sign his team wins, you never know, next week. All right, uh, Ralphie, uh, Roughhead appeared to cop a nasty one, the ball in the eye. Oh, he certainly did. The pot thickens with this uh, accidental falcon right into the head of Jordan Roughhead. We know that uh, Jack Trengove missed a couple of weeks with concussion, but have a look at this uh, close-up. Now, his pupil looks really dilated. I'm not going to say that I'm an optometrist, but if he was concussed, he would have been in the rooms and having that SCAT 3 protocol. It's actually 15 minutes of real time, not 20. It has been changed this year, but they made no attempt to give him a concussion test. You would think at this stage that that looks like he's done for the day. He seems re resigned to his fate, um, but it doesn't seem like concussion. What about the uh, Reese Palmer bump on Fletcher Roberts? We'll take you through all four of these. Now, um, Cameron Ling rubbed uh, Reese Palmer out for the grand final for this, but I, I think accidental head contact, or it is actually allowed. Now, you would see that uh, he jumped a little bit off the ground, but it seemed like their heads clashed and made contact. Now, if this is careless impact and low, uh, careless and low impact, then he misses, uh, and then he only gets a $1,500 fine. If it's intentional low impact, then of course he misses one week and would miss the grand final. You think Stevie J might come back for him anyway. And this is the second bump here. Josh Dunkley is hit high by Lachlan Whitfield. Now, it did rock his head back, but again, I think that's low impact. It is in the play, so it is deemed to be careless. I think that one is clearly a $1,500 fine. He's not missing any grand finals as a result of that one. We'll flow forward to Easton Wood. Now, he hits uh, Lockie Whitfield here. Now, the neck is considered as high. You can see that he's gone ahead and clipped him there. But again, is it in play? You remember that the neck is high, given that uh, we saw that Tom Hawkins was suspended for a very similar incident uh, on Phil Davis, so the neck is to the head. But if that's in play, 
play, it's careless and he misses uh, and, uh, and he only gets a fine. And the last one here on the bench. Now, um, this one is Nathan Wilson. Now, again, it's after the play. It's a little, uh, well, a little flush there. Um, intentional and low impact. I'll say it again. That is a suspension. Do you think he should miss a grand final for that? Probably not. But that's the rules and that's the mm. tick, a box, a tick a box approach that potentially, if that's seen to be uh, um, contact that is uh, excessive enough for a report, well, he might miss. Thanks, Ralphie. Should he miss for a knock like uh, that? We know that it's got to be... You'd hope not. Yeah. You'd hope not. But no, we did hear the umpires telling the players, didn't we, yeah. that you know it's got to be below the head. I think they, in slow mo it always looks worse, and Liam Picken uh, certainly put a bit of mayonnaise bit on of, it. A bit of home and away about it, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> you can say that about your cousin. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> uh, dear. We'll take a break. Stay with us. We've got a, a, a tight one here at Spotless Stadium. It is the Dogs leading by nine points. When we come back, we'll head to the Ultra Tune Lab with David King and Jared Healy. You're watching Finals Footy on Fox. This is GWS Giants versus Western Bulldogs. I want to take you back to uh, 2008. You're wearing the red, white, and blue. The doggies mm -hmm. are playing Richmond. You remember this game? You're I do. Forward. Yeah, yeah. You're for despite your natural inclination to stay back. You're <laughs> forward. You take a mark inside forward 50. The game's in the balance, and you fake a hamstring injury. I thought at that stage it was just a split second moment where I thought. I don't know if I kick this. I think I'm too far out. I don't know if I've got the distance in me. For me, looking back on it, it's definitely the, the biggest regret of my life that I didn't... Is it really? Didn't, didn't want it. That's the biggest regret of your career? Of my career. Brian Lake on Open Mic on Tuesday night at 9.30. But let's uh, dissect the first half at Spotless Stadium. And for that, we head to the Ultra Tune Lab with Jared and Kingy. Love what the dogs have done, Jared. They've been fantastic in the first half, particularly without the ball. They've got control, haven't they? They've got the game uh, playing on their terms. Uh, they've got the defensive elements of the blockade and uh, the Giants are struggling to find a way through. Let's have a look at what that looks like. And it's just getting numbers there to harass. Frontal pressure, trying to force the Giants to over handball, get themselves into trouble, and they did time and time again. And then the Dogs want to handball. They want to force the Giants to defend for longer. It's not pure. In, in a lot of ways, it's messy football, but this is exactly, be pure, was it? it's exactly what they wanted. This is ex uh, what uh, Luke Beveridge is playing for. He wants to make it a scrap. He wants to drag the hyper-talents of the uh, Giants back to this level of game because in this sort of game, the Dogs reign supreme more often than not. They've played this sort of footy all year. They There's have. been nothing really pretty. I know it's been, time's been labelled sexy, inaccurately for mine. And this little pivot here, look at that, bang, gone. And he just put uh, Patton in his wake. Look at the ball use out of the defensive half for the Giants. And this is where I think there's been a separator in yep. the game. They normally just step through traffic yep. here. They're starting to be really aggressive because they're getting, they're getting frustrated. The Dogs have laid 11 forward 50 tackles. The Giants haven't laid one. No, they're uh, right off at the present time. Guys like Josh Kelly, he's had lots of possessions, 15, but he's batting at about 11% uh, effectiveness. If it wasn't for the likes of Wilson and Hayne and uh, Williams across the half-back line, they'd be lucky to be still in touch as they are now. They've had 37 inside 50s, the dogs. I just want to show you a couple of things that they're doing poorly. Their ball use on the way through. Just want to show, if you don't use the hit-up players and you just bomb yep. the ball long like that, pausing it there. These three players here for the Giants, Haynes, Williams, Wilson, Shaw, it's been Davis, it's been others, they'll get back first and then they'll provide the out number and they'll get the speed into their game. They've got to make sure that they get their leading patterns right and they make sure they're not zonable. It's tough to uh, make a decision to uh, look lower and uh, kick the short ball under the pump as we saw Dunkley was there. But if he doesn't do that, the likes of Libba who are leading up the ground and Dixon who are trying to make sure accountable all of a sudden go from in the best position to in the worst position. Let's have a look if you give the speed game back to the Giants. This yeah. is where they can really hurt you. And this is why we think, we fear they've left them in the game, uh, the Western Bulldogs. Sending a nine point differential at half time. As soon as you allow them to switch, they are gone. The gut runners of Kelly and Scully and, and Whitfield getting to the other side of the ground. It's almost pure. They've had 44 opportunities to come out of the back half. They've only scored seven points. If they can play at this speed, they'll score heavily in the second half. They will, but the question is, uh, will they be able to? They came in flat. They've uh, probably just uh, found a little bit of form midway through the second quarter. Went to the half-time break, though, uh, conceding another goal. And they've got a hell of a lot of work to do, both up here and get those legs going if they're going to challenge the Dogs, because they have got their A-grade going. Need Bonson Pelly to get rolling, be the clearance player for them in the second half. The Dogs are well on their way, Sandy. 
Thank you, Kingy. We've got an update from Brad Johnson, too, who's been down into the Bulldogs' rooms, and we understand that there is now bleeding in the eye of Rufford, and that's what their main concern is, that if he did go back out onto the ground and was moving around, that blood would be pumped uh, into, more into the eye, which could cause a major problem. Mm. So we understand an eye specialist has been called, and uh, let's hope that everything is all right. We certainly don't want to alarm his family or friends or anyone, but we're just keeping up to date with what is happening. So we'll take a break. It's a nine-point ball game in favour of the Dogs. And when we come back, a big second half. There is Heath Shaw. Had plenty to say to his teammates at one stage during the game. Let's see what they can do in the second half as we head back to Spotless. The second half is Brian Taylor. So ready to go. Goal for goal battle in the first half of footy. You get the feeling this one's going right to the wire. Mumford with the knockout. Shield, one of the free, tried to milk it, nothing on. Delhouse just went and got it. Beautiful, clever palm down by Hunter. In the path, picking on his non-preferred side. Three on one, Davis in amongst there. Haynes there as well. Dixon being dangerous tonight. McRae tackled a little high. Umpire said the Tomlinson tackle was OK. And Shaw with the clearing kick. It was an awkward floating ball, and it carried a couple more than... They expect that the dogs have been so well organised in their defensive structure. Kick out wide to Bonson Pelly. It's a beautiful one from Eastern Wood. I can tell you that Jordan Ruffhead hasn't appeared in the second half. We'll give you an update on him. We'll talk you through Callum War. We suspect that both those players no further part. Fletcher Robertson pushed forward. forward. Williams bombs it long. Now Eastern Wood. Jeremy Cameron gives chase. He's just had the one touch. Jeremy Cameron in this game and Eastern Wood. Was able to cover that one without too many dramas. Kick wasn't great. It made a proppy stop for Boyd, but he gets one over the top. G Hunter's got to do his best work here. He does. Tomlinson there as well. In goes Dixon. Fast hands. Hunter ducked under the tackle. That's why the umpire said play on, not high. Good decision. Been good umpiring here tonight. Picking two on one again. Trying to keep it working there, Dunkley. Too many, though. Patful. Griffin, the combine of Shield in the middle. Now they've got time and space. Here's Scully. Shield demanding the footy back. Got it as well. Long handball out wide. GWS looking dangerous. Shield on the left boot. Lines him up and misses. One end to the other. Impressive. So Marcus Pontempelli just limping a little bit there. Got a slight knock on the hip there from Dylan Shield. I think he'll be okay. Nothing too much in that one. Missed opportunity. Got some good overlap run there, but they couldn't get a kick away. They couldn't find a mark. And that last build up, though, was classic Giants. The gut runners and the elite aerobic players. Here's Nick Haynes. It's just so hard to find marks inside 50 here tonight. Haynes is going to bomb it long. Lobs there. He's a good contested mark. Jeremy Cameron hasn't been sighted. Now he gets a look at it, the big man, Devin Smith, look at the class, got back onto the left, Devin Smith, and he had it really in his sights, not happy at all with the end result. The Dogs' defence is just outstanding, two marks inside forward 50 for the night for the Greater Toby, Western Sydney Giants, one Toby, to Johnny Patton and one to Toby Green, that's an outstanding effort on a night where there's no breeze and it's perfect conditions. Yeah. Early summer conditions here. So from the goal square, the Dogs pick and lines it up over the top. One of the spoil back into play. Goes towards the boundary line. Whitfield again. Put it into a dangerous spot here. Dogs fight each other off hands. Goal. That easy for Lobb. Oh, great goal for Big Lobb. And here comes the bond after that hit from Dylan Shield. He's pretty sore. Pointing to his hip there. Let's hope he's okay. That was a great finish from Lobb. Big man. What skills. Gets the banana kick away across his body. Good start here for the Giants. Got a little bit of their overlap happening. You guys mentioned Marcus Bontempelli. Copped a bit of a knock to the hip. He's headed to the bench. Just hobbling at the moment. The doctors are going to check him out. Here we go. Hopefully get that hip moving again. And just to confirm... We've seen Callan Ward come back to the bench, but he is fully kitted in his tracksuit, gears and runners, so Callan Ward is out and done for tonight's game. Yeah, and Jordan Ruffhead, you can count him out too, Lee. He hasn't emerged in the second half. He's got, uh, I'm convinced, bleeding in the eye, which puts him in grave danger for the week after as well. Long ball in, 
Giants have got some momentum at the moment. Big ball here, Cameron and Morris. <laughs> Just got the fingernail there, Dale Morris, the veteran. No doubt in my mind, watching Dr. Zimmerman with that big silver box, that the bomb might have been going to get a little bit of immediate pain relief. Richo. Yeah, he went straight down into the room, Smith Zimmer. Easton Wood, the kick in. Oh, what a mark. Clean was superb. Beautiful clean hands. He looks inside. And doing so, ran off the mark. He said, come on, someone come at me. Smith does eventually. So the Dogs looking to be the first ever team to come from seventh position on the ladder and make a grand final. At the moment, scores are level. Hunter, that's Clay Smith, 18 now and four goals. What a performance. Yeah, great first half effort and continue on here in the Hold third, which as you say. Down. He's just drifting forward on his own here again now. Dalhouse, slow movement here by the dogs. Careful consideration to the placement of the ball. Dunkley underneath it all. There he is. Got the little quick hands out. Didn't quite get enough on it. Caleb Daniel, sneaky, deliberate little click. Got it there to that man you speak of. Smith, centering ball. One-hander by Dixon. Great centering kick. Sensational one-hand grab. He's sure. He hasn't been a happy man tonight. He's spent most of his time on this man. Dixon, who is a natural goal kicker, and he's just getting into dangerous spots. He got Heath Shaw to the top of the goal square. He just had a little bit too much body strength there. It was a good centering kick. Two, what a grab. They've only had two goal kickers, the Dogs. Four to Smith and two to this man. It may be four and three. It should be four and three. Dixon kicks his third. Two goal kickers with seven goals. And Shaw gives him one to the mush. Oh, let's go. It was a great centering kick. Lee Shaw having a bit to say, but that was just a one-out contest from a great kick against the boundary line. It was absolutely perfect. Doggies back out to a six-point lead. So, Tori Dixon had some kicking issues last week. Oh. <laughs> he's sure. He's grumpy tonight, oh, sure he is. Oh. Boyd and Mumford. And the big man, Boyd, emerges with it. He drives them forward. Haynes ghosting across. And he's an intercept specialist. 22 intercept marks in the last five games for Nick Haynes. He floats in the air, doesn't he? He hangs in the air. One of those players that gets up there. Just sort of stays there for that split second. Great mark. Five intercept marks, as you said, Das. Gee, that's a good performance. Dogs will be dangerous if they can find a stringer or someone else to catch fire here as well. There is Hunter. Shield been impressive. Cornelio close to the boundary line. Sneaky little handball. Did well, Williams. Fought off the tackler, driving ball, three on one. Here comes Morris, left his man, and that leaves them out the back here. Big opportunity. Palmer fell over when he should have kept his feet. Clever handball, Hamling. McLean tried to thread the needle. Little smother. Now Hem Hamling to Biggs. Taps it out to Johannesson. Dunkley through traffic. Wasn't quite sure what to do. Did the right thing. Mark will be taken. Free kick paid. Delhouse. Gee, Delhouse tripped his own man, Daniel, then. Delaus looks to dish off for the handball. Long ball inside 50. Here they go, Stringer. Just mentioned they needed to get another forward involved. And yeah. this man pops up. Yeah, hasn't done anything tonight, Jake Stringer, but found himself out the back. Every good bit of play with the Western Bulldogs starts with them getting out of tight situations with elite hands. At half back there, there was even some handballs along the ground. They eventually get someone out been talked about this week. It's a major reason why. To become only the, in third, front. the third goal kicker for the Western Bulldogs, Jake Stringer. There's the task ahead. Stringer normally reliable. And he too sprays it. So that's some set shot misses that really were gettable. And that was a big one for Jake Stringer. This is Wilson now. He's shaping to come at the right of your screen there and that's what he ended up doing all oh, partially smothered the kick and now an awkward ball for Haynes to handle McLean 
And that's a little win for the Dogs, just builds a bit of pressure. An absolute full house here, spotless stadium, Western Sydney. It's great, isn't it? Look at that. Looks great to us, doesn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. Look at the terraces of Dogs fans in amongst the GWS fans there. Brilliant to see up here in Sydney. Who would have ever thought two Sydney teams in a prelim final up here? How many times have you seen hack kicks come out of the defensive 50 for the Giants and be marked by Bulldogs? They just Plenty. can't get that run and carry off half back that they do so well. Boyd to the top of the square. Who can get hold of this? Another Boyd. Boyd to Boyd almost. Davis, strong in defence. There's that hack ball that Richo's talking about. This time, doesn't go to the dogs, but it oh, goes out of bounds. And that was not deliberate. That was just a mungle kick. There was a player in the direction that he kicked it. I reckon that is going over the top. You, yeah, players are under the pump in defensive 50. There's not much more Phil Davis could have done then. Yeah, tough call. Comes back in again. Big pack forms. Tom Boyd, Davis again. Stringer, can he weave some magic here? Kick was smothered. The box back out. Clay Smith kick four in the first half. Ricochet off hands. And they get a look at a boundary throw in right where they love it, the Bulldogs. Happy to just maintain possession at this part of the ground, apply some pressure. Looks like the Bond has recovered very, very quickly from that hip complaint. Here is Davis trying to swat it towards the boundary line. William Stringer starting to lurk into this game. The tackle by Stringer. He had prior opportunity, and that's a Jake Stringer free kick. There it is again. Zach Williams picks the ball up, and he just sees Bulldogs in his face. How's that? Libba tried to take it on his left. Stringer was happy for him to take it, knowing that it was really his. See and the umpire the, said no. See those numbers that just flashed up there? That is very impressive. 11 tackles inside their forward 50 for the Western Bulldogs. Zero for the Giants. That's why they built this lead. Just sheer pressure, willpower, keeping the ball locked in their forward line. Stringer. Now they've got to take their chances. With it all to do. Where the 50 line intersects the boundary. In he comes. Not going to get the job done. High ball, possible mark, and it goes to Mumford in the back pocket. Now, can they get it out of here? Uh, here is the look at Mumford. They're, they're not deep pockets here, and the dogs have been able to defend these exits very easily. Fisted away by Bond and Pelly. Now picking. And it's been kept in by Easton Wood, so they launch another attack inside 50. Stringer's going to have a mark here. Big fly. Beautiful defensive fist, and in came Scully. Look at that again, though. Uh, well played. It's Whitfield who came through. Look at Scully's hard running. Hunter in the way. Scully wrapped him up nicely on the wing. Stolen by Toby Green. Here come the Giants out the back. Goes to Patton. Patton will mark. Play on. Turn around. GWS down by one point. Patton goals. Delight amongst the fans. Well, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. A hat kick off half back. But they got through. And they finally found someone out inside 50. A very easy goal for John Patton. Gee, they're soaking up some pressure in their defensive half of the ground. The Giants, and they're staying with the Dogs. They haven't been able to get their game going, but they're there. Look at the tackling. That started it all. The interception by Green, the, the good kick, and Patton kicks his third goal, and they're down by just one. And guys, yes. just updating again, Jordan Ruffhead, you can see he's put on his polo shirt. He's done for the night, as you called, Das. Just repeating to Callan Ward, also in the same boat. He's got his tracksuit gear on. He's finished as well, both with concussion. Maybe Jordan Ruffhead a little bit more to do with the eye as opposed to concussion. Yeah, I remember an old teammate of mine, Simon Garlic, will be watching tonight. Got a foot in the eye. It's a bleeding situation. And he missed weeks with that. Here's Bonham Pelly had it stripped out of his hands. Toby Green becoming a big factor in this game. He's so dangerous. He hasn't had a lot of touches, but he's kicked two goals and been involved in a couple of others. Play on. Green sends it long, and out the back they've got a knock, and then coasting across, Rory Lobb. Hard to defend, 206 Do centimetres. Do not give it away, Schmidt. And there's a bit going on with Tom Boyd, Jeremy yeah. Cameron. There's been a fair bit of verbal Do all night. Look at that mark from Lobb. 
She's a good contested mark. He's only going to get better as he puts a little bit more weight on. Taken 57 contested marks for the year. Number two in the AFL coming into tonight, Rory Lobb. It's scary, that 206 centimetre giant of giants. And he steers it home. Giants back in front. They will never surrender. The banner says in the cheer squad, and they're not. The dogs are applying immense pressure on them, as they always do. And they're staying with them, and things are starting to happen a little bit more now for them. Patton gets out the back. Finally, a contested mark inside 50. No rough head. Will that take a toll in the ruck? So there's Lobb kicking the goal. There we go. Clearances of 5 2 this way to the Giants. I'm just wondering if Boyd is starting to get really tired with Ruffhead out of the game, Dars. Yeah, it's a concern for them. This is GWS's biggest lead, five points. The Dogs did lead by 13 at one stage, but it's a big ask for him, though, isn't it, to suddenly have to take. 90% of the ruck work. And you'd think what Rory Lobb did then, pushing hard forward, trying to work him over and tire out the young fella is a pretty smart tactic. My ball by Daniel Smith, just a real goer in there. Kelly handball to Patful. Patful got time to steady, looks out wide. Here's over the top pattern. Hamling was there. Boyd trying to mop up for the dogs. Turns around, little kick's got to be good, it is for picking. So now the ascendancy wanted to go in the middle, had to go wide. The left foot of McRae is perfectly placed, and that's a horrible kick cut off by Kelly. It's a horrible kick, but it wasn't an easy uh, little chest mark to take there from Kelly. Made it look easy. That was motoring, and it was low. Kick the last two goals, the Giants have got a bit of momentum up at the moment. Their tool four is suddenly looking dangerous now. At the back, Whitfield, the runners, Devin Smith was out, and streaming towards goal. The boundary line, the saviour there. There's Steve Waugh. Kevin Sheedy shaking hands. He's Andy he's Collins, I think. Western Sydney local, of course, Steve War, and a big fan of the Giants. Dave Matthews, the CEO, as well on screen there. And Sheedy to be commended with the job that he's done here. The inaugural coach of GWS. Don't ever underestimate what he's done for this club. Here's Bonampelli. Goes forward again. This one will go out of bounds here. We'll have a boundary throw in at half forward for the Western Bulldogs. Got to get Liver involved again, the Western Bulldogs. Clearances what's are starting he, to mount up this quarter. What's he had tonight, Richo Liver? He's only had one this quarter, Liver, but the GWS are getting a, an advantage around this situation now, and that's what he's so good at. Hicken did well. There, there he is, is Liver with the handball wide. The two left footers, Hunter got it. Put it back into a real good spot. And look at this, Tomlinson peels off his man, takes the mark, wants to kick start them off the full back line. They go wide. The interception by Joe Hannison did well against Scully. And he's only had seven for the game, Liver. He needs to try and just find a little bit more. And you can see that hard run of Tom Scully and Whitfield. And they are just some of the best aerobic athletes in the game. And they'll be backing them as this game goes on. They'll think that they'll be able to outrun some of the Bulldogs. It's Camilio's underground ball. Patton and Dale Morris boundary throwing. And the worry there, Darcy, is those hard runners that you're talking about are the big ball winners for the Giants. Shields had 19, Kelly 19, Scully 17, Canelio 17 and Whitfield 15. All getting big numbers so their run late in this game is going to be big. Well after half time in their last three games they've kicked 26 goals to six the Giants so they are a very good team in second halves. Responded Pelly with strength wanted to find McRae. A little clip from Devin Smith on the way through. So eight and a quarter minutes left here in the third quarter. Anyone's ball game here right now. Who wants it? Grand final opportunity against Sydney. GWS just look to be getting their game together here. Are the dogs tiring a little? After consecutive elimination final wins, basically. Come all the way. And can they do it? From they seventh position on the ladder. They won't go away, the dogs. They'll be there right at the end. You're confident with that, Richo? I, I just think that's what they've shown all year. They don't get blown away in games. I know they've had some tough, two tough finals, but their history this year says they'll fight till the final siren beats. I know the Giants are fast finishers as well, but this is high stakes. 
Giving themselves a little bit of a breather there with that slow play. Here's McLean to Boyd, meeting the sandwich. Got to go again, Eastern Wood does. Keeps it in front. Shield put his head over the footy, won a hard one. Slick, quick hands it was. Now Haynes loves to run off half back. Just had to bite his time a little. Go backwards, found Shaw. Now Shaw over the top. Whitfield can go to Cameron. Long! handball to Cameron, here they come at him Morris, back to Whitfield Whitfield inside 50, precision kick, couldn't quite mark it Palmer, Roberts let it go I'm not sure he handballed or kicked it ball over the line and out of bounds So some of the link up run from the Giants it's Whitfield and Scully really starting to just work really hard on the wings, they've been enormous players this year for the Giants feel like the Bulldogs under siege at the moment Dalhouse. That's what they do really well. Bonson Pelly kick out towards the boundary line. The Giants fans are saying, hey, you paid a couple deliberate. What about that one? Well, the Phil Davis one down the other end got paid, and that one didn't. So, inconsistent. Oh, now it's been paid. Well, he had to. He had to after the one down the other end with Phil Davis. Yeah, I think that's the correct decision in the end. As you said, Richo, for consistency. And now yeah, Wilson, look at that. Got around Stringer. Nice party trick, that one. Giants in good position, big pack. Underground handball from Dale Morris. And now the Bulldogs link up through McRae. Good pressure from the Giants. They withstand at the Dogs. McRae's handball smothered. Stringer's got to commit himself here. And then he gets it over. Oh, Whitfield had a crack at McRae. I'm not sure what that was about. You went at him. You went at him. You went at him. Went at the head. Umpire saying you went at him. I reckon he might have caught the end of it. Have a look at this. Whitfield went at him. McRae ducked just in the nick of time. Ball goes inside 50. Free kick to Boyd of the Dogs. What a superb underground handball we saw before from Morris as well. Short little kick here to Dalhouse. Jeremy Cameron still hasn't had a kick or marked the football. I don't know if you can get him up the ground a little bit more, but... Got to try and get him involved somehow. Every player within one kick of the footy here comes out wide looking for Hamlin. They made a little bit of ground, got it almost to their half forward line here, the Dogs. And this is Whitfield again. Luckily, he missed. He was going for the rib tickler, and then McRae ducked, and he was very lucky he didn't make contact with the head. It would have been in all sorts. Yeah, big mummy. He's got the strength and the experience advantage in the ruck because Zane Cordy is having to become a makeshift ruckman and that's a challenge for the Bulldogs. How's Hamling's final series? He's playing on a pretty good player, Jeremy Cameron. And he really has stood up for the Bulldogs. Joel Hamling. Caleb Daniel. Wide. Strong tackle. Griffin. Scully. Awkward bouncing footy. Which way will it fall? Oh, what uncanny to Toby Green. And now they're out. They are right out. And there's Palmer. The one inclusion tonight. It's too far out, I think, for him to score. Well, he's got to almost kick the goal now because there were some options on. He's chosen to go back. Not a long kick. This will take everything he's got, Reese Palmer. Former Fremantle docker. He was the AFL Rising Star winner back in 2008. He last played in round 16. He dishes it off, so he was concerned. He's sure. He connected pretty well with it. All the way, he's sure. That's three goals in a row to GWS. Oh, what a moment in this game that is. Pete Shaw, who's had some issues down the other end defensively, comes up and kicks a massive goal. Three in a row. They're starting to feel it. Their game plan is starting to get going. They're finding space and overlap run now. Can the doggies respond? They need a clearance here. They need Boyd to get up. How can this happen? After you're standing there for about 30 seconds, Shaw get free, kicks his first goal of the year from outside 50 from a slow play in a prelim final. Oh, three in a row. They lead it by 11. Their biggest margin of the game. This is an issue now. Got the clearance to go with it. Richo reckons they're starting to free ball a bit. Oh, Morris really? gets the free. I just think the ruck issue is becoming a bit of a problem. They're getting some clean ball around some stoppages now, and then they can run and carry from it. Morris from half back looking for Bonham Pelly. 
Boyd was there. That'll go all the way to the boundary line and we'll have a throw in right in front of those two officials guarding the interchange there, as you can see, in their chairs. They've overcome some serious challenges this year. The Bulldogs, they almost on a weekly basis, have lost key players. And it's happened again tonight. Jordan Roughhead, no further part. On the other side, the Giants have lost their co-captain in Callum Ward. As that one spills out for a boundary throw-in. So 4.22 remaining in the third term. There's Callum Ward. Knocked out cold and in the rooms at half time, Darcy was getting around all of his teammates, Callum Ward. Mumford. Fast hands. Delhouse now. McLean's got to go back with the flight. Williams just as hard coming at him the other way. Dogs crashing in. Williams over the top. And he might be pinged, Bulldog, sucked it in. Joel, you drag it in, Joel. There you go, the old drag it in, Joel. Dunkley, the beneficiary, shifts it off to Stringer. Short about the, uh, thought about the short one now, goes the longer option, picking the target, had his man beaten, protected the drop zone, just couldn't reel it in. Crunching tackle by Smith. Kelly to Shaw, smother by Delhouse. Superb. And the dogs lock it in their 50. Superb, there's Heath Shaw again. There hasn't been many times tonight where he's got it in that back 50 and had time to deliver. He's had to rush most of his kicks tonight. Those couple of pressure acts are their trademark. The Bulldogs, Boyd slaps it forward. They'll get another look at it. There's a couple of really big plays. Clay Smith tackle. And then a smother. It was Dalhouse involved. So they just feel like they desperately need to pinch one here. Late in the third quarter. Boyd and Mumford coming through Liberatore. He's been a bit quiet in the last quarter and a bit. Spills out to Dalhouse. Off the side of his boot, Dixon. He sure slaps it towards oh. the boundary line. He wanted to stay in. Oh, well done. Brilliant play, sure. And he gains some serious meterage to the wing. But it's going to come back just as fast as it went out. Biggs with the kicking to do. Haynes in front. Good effort there by Bonham Pelly. Gathers the ball. Oh, the fend off Brian. Gave it to Cordy. Oh, yeah. Snap it. Goal. Dogs are back in it. Unbelievable play from the Dogs. Marcus Bonton Pelly hasn't had a huge night. We know he looked a bit sore earlier in the quarter. But what a play. Didn't mark it, got after it at ground level. I don't argue. And then hands it off. He's a superstar. And he doesn't have to have 30 possessions. He's had 16 now. He can get involved in a few more goals. He can be a match winner again. Big moments are built for the best players. Great fend off by Bond and Pally. Fantastic finish by Zane Cordy. This game just continues to give so many special moments. Bontempelli hasn't had his most brilliant of nights, but he's doing what he does best, influencing the moments and influencing the game. It's a big clearance, this one coming up now. Liberatore on hands and knees. Dunkley got it forward. Daniel, he's had a fumbly night tonight, the little man. They went with a really small setup there at that centre bounce. Liberatore got the hands out. Mark taken by Tomlinson. Just the required 15. Now the run and spread. Yeah. Dangerous from GWS. Green, the recipient of that run and spread. Yeah, that centre bounce, Bon and Pelly was the deepest forward, and the other five were all smalls. Oh boy, what a game we've got here. This is really bubbling, Hamling. Gee, that's frustrating, I reckon, for the coach. It's near the boundary line on your 50. You should be able to force that to ground. As Richo said, in this third quarter, the GWS have looked threatening at various stages. Kick out of the pack. Whitfield's got to go, and he did. Spot corridor players here. Yeah, one of them is Griffin. They're lining up on the outside. Pat was there, and he thought, no. I'm probably a better kick than he is. Griffin backwards. Hop up. Dogs have got everyone back now. With a minute 48, deliberate ploy here. Understanding of the clock is good. Short ball wide to Haynes. Penetrating kick when he really winds up Haynes. Every Dogs player will be in their defensive 50 when he kicks this, just about. Mark and Hope, 55 metres out. Long high ball. Jeremy Cameron sets himself off the ground. Scully, kick the goal. Always going to be a dangerous play. It shouldn't happen. 
believe it's a goal. We'd just like to check if it's touched off the boot. OK. Score review. Umpire's call is a goal. Please check it wasn't touched off the boot. With you underway. Thank you. No, may well be touched here, Das. Yeah, it is, I think. Oh, yeah, there goes the finger. From Stringer, isn't it? Yeah, Stringer. Oh, little finger. And the one next to his little finger, I think. They're all setting up uh, the players for the kick in. It looks like that has flicked the finger. Yep. So I think I don't like the way they're looking at it again. Means they're not sure. I think that's... Review complete. The score is a behind. It was touched. Good use of the review. Good decision by all. It's a significant moment because... Massive, yeah. That was Chris Appleton. He is the most senior goal umpire we have. And the best. So a minute 24 remaining and Boyd's kick in. Or oh, Dunkley's a good overhead mark for his size. Had a good look at it. Couldn't quite bring it to ground. Unbelievable tension in this ground. So much at stake. Goal either way here would be massive, wouldn't it? Minute 20 left. Both sides chasing a shot at history. Tom Boyd started his career as a giant. And they link up by hand. Winning a lot of these clearance situations. Wilson, just too quick on that occasion. Their big forwards line up again. Can the dogs defend? Hamlin goes back. Do they get a touch on that one and hit the post? Yeah, they <laughs> might have scored. They've been lucky in the last 30 seconds. Get a quick point kick in here, I reckon. The dogs. Yeah. There's some of the coaching staff. Rowan Smith down there. John Corey out the back. Hunter taken forward. Umpire said it was all legal. Dunkley through the middle. Gave it a run to pressure. Bottom Pally shrugged off the tackle. Can he regain his composure? No, he can't. Dixon was there. G ran into a head-eye tackle. Smith, I thought, was a little unlucky. Not get a free. Knock on by Stringer. Comes to Dallas. Took a bounce. Run down from behind. Still got the handball away. An almighty crash by Smith. Picked up by Daniel. Oh, Goal. Yeah. Play of the year from the Western Bulldogs. It's got him out of their seats. Unbelievable persistence from the Dogs to claw their way back into this game. He did get the handball away. It was a great chase by Patful. But, gee, there was a good bit of play by Liberatore. The handball off to Stringer, who tapped it on to Dalhouse. But they got a quick point kick in down the other end. The Giants didn't have time to get their correct set up from the point kick in, and it always gave them an opportunity to go the length of the ground. So the Melbourne supporters back there from a Bulldog point of view, they love it. What about that? A fingernail at the other end for Scully. It's a score review change, and then the Bulldogs through Daniel. He's had a tough night. 23 seconds remaining. Boyd and Mumford. Liberatore was important the last one. In comes Bond and Pelly. Hopper there for the Giants. Dogs have got the extra back to us. She's never had quick hands there before. Thank you. Yep. 14 seconds. Beveridge has a look before he addresses. There's Caleb Daniel. Bonham Pally there as well. Umpires are letting it go here tonight. One point the it. margin. Nick Beveridge with his team. Magnets moving galore. Mumford trying to palm down. Boyd with a funny little handball. Daniel gets it out in front of Hunter. Siren will sound. They won't get a chance. Big Smith, Dixon, come nose to nose. They come from everywhere here. I think this has got a little bit of a eruption in it. Oh, guys. Okay, okay, boys. Players are okay, milling okay, around. Boys. They continue to arrive at the base of the fire. This is a ripping prelim final. GWS by one point. Stay with us. Cracking last quarter. Back within one point at three-quarter time. Lingy. Wow. Perfectly summarised there, BT. This game is in the balance, of course. What a ripper it's been. Just watching the GWS huddle then. Leon Cameron just passionately pleading for his players to rise again. They found it hard tonight. They haven't been able to move the ball as fluently as what they would like. But he knows if they can keep winning the ball at a contest, keep getting the ball forward, their running power will get over the top. But this crowd's fantastic. There's Bulldog supporters everywhere. It's going to be a beauty of the last quarter. It sure is. Do not walk away from the screen at any moment. Something special is on the cards here. Spotless Stadium in Sydney. The prize of a grand final spot awaits. 
And it will be a fairy tale for one of these two sides. A little handy from Dalhouse was important. Stringer came off the line. Slick Campbell out from Bond and Pelly McRae. It's a good ball. Cordy dropped it. Davis got back. The co-captain yes. Haynes under pressure. The kick might be okay for Devon Smith. Through Kane Morris. Picking had a go at Scully from behind, but the overlap run here from GWS. Yeah, it's Kelly. Little left foot kick out wide. Nicely placed to Jeremy Cameron. He's had a quiet night, Richo. Yeah, he, start, he started at centre half forward here, and they've got Patton and Lobb as the deeper options. Cameron just a short little kick. Nice little ball there. Here's Kelly again. He's a highly skilled player. Puts this right to the spot. Into the goal square. They come over the top. Good mark in the end. Whitfield trying to jump high. Just the mind uh, score. So look at this. Chest mark delivered. Lace out. Right on the spot. Now the Bulldogs asked 20,090 days since they last played in a grand final. They're down by two. GWS have never been there. Yeah, back in 1961, Haynes is a good aerialist and he's done well to get it to Shield. Scully's having a massive night. Tom Scully bends it to the goal square. It's going to be a GWS mark here. It could have been green, but Log, the big man in the right spot. Is he going to go left or right here, BT? He's got plenty of skills for a massive unit. He's still deciding. I think he's going to go left, uh, Richo. He's tilted six centimetre, big man, you'd be saying. This is not uh, likely, but Lobb's a classy player. And GWS strike first. That's a big goal. And he's becoming a factor, Rory Lobb. He is, and he's the deepest forward. Leon Cameron's decided to... Put him as the deepest forward in this last quarter. Moved Jeremy Cameron up the ground. Cameron got involved and got his first mark of the game. That's going to be important. I think Jeremy needs to have a solid quarter for the Giants to get home here. Look at this from behind the goals. You see the scully kick. Lob was always going to be there. Green was covering off as well. Yeah, just, just got in behind. Tom well, Scully, it was a big decision by Scully to hook around the corner. He may have had a handball option on. It's turned out all right. Might be the Battle of the Bridges, the Bolting, the Westgate. Who knows? And a free kick. Giants out of the middle. Mummy at the moment. Lead by eight points, GWS. A little bit of trouble getting the ball back here. So Mumford shooting out the handball to Davis, who just got it inside 50 as deep as he could. Toby Green. Their strong hands. This for their biggest lead of the game. Well, all of a sudden, something they haven't been able to do all night is take marks inside 50. And they've started the last half of that third quarter and two marks already. They're starting to find some targets in there, something they couldn't do for most of the game. Toby Green with a monster kick. Distance should be okay for him. Obviously knows the ground well. 45 metre kick, got a bending back the right way. Oh yeah! GWS by a game high 14. Consecutive goals here for GWS to start the last quarter and they lead by 14. As you said, BT, game high lead. And the Dogs desperately need to strike back here. Start in the centre. And it's such a brave side. Can they find a way again here? Oh, what a player, Toby Green. Put together an elite season. The Giants fans, they love it. Plenty of orange here tonight, celebrating. So the Dogs desperately need a clearance. Dunkley coming through Williams. Look at the class to Hopper. Good tackle, Liberatore got hold of him. Williams flicks it over the top. Batted forward intelligently. It was by Haynes, and now it's the outside run. Really starting to become a factor. Cornelio coughed up the handball. McLean, he's a specialist at that. Straight up. He draws three kicks, lowers the body. Now, what can Toby McLean Fine, he's going to chip one. It's a good pass. Well done, though. Shield got back and had Tom Boyd's name all over it. Back to McLean, though. Yeah, he just thought about going now. He peels off to Johannesson. Got it into the middle of the ground. Here's Boyd. Goes deep. Good-looking kick. Smith the danger. Mark taken there by Dixon. 
dead eye. Dixon gets up, runs, plays on. A momentary left by GWS. He's been good tonight, Tory Dixon. He now has four goals. They've only had four goal kickers. Four to Smith, four to Dixon, and Cordy and Daniel have kicked the other two. Gee, it's a goal kicking frenzy here in the first five minutes of the last quarter. It was a good kick by that man, Matty Boyd. That was a perfectly weighted kick to advantage. That was a horrible situation there for the defender. You know the ball's going to go over your head and you can feel the weight of the forward leaning on you. You know you're in massive trouble. Well done, Dixon. So a recall from the bounce and it'll be Tom Boyd and the big mummy to square off again. Pyle tosses it up. Liberatore lead him in there. Winning clearances. Heard the umpire. So they're, just, they're just not going to go away, the doggies. Yeah, they've had an enormous yeah. amount of self-belief, this group. Dixon's got a one-on-one -on -one again. Back with the flight. Lockie Whitfield. Every time you feel the Giants are getting a surge of momentum, the dogs come straight back. This is going to boil down to who clams up and yeah, who can handle the pressure better because the, the scores are always going to be only a goal or two in it. Here's Jeremy Cameron. A leanish day for him by his lofty standard. Daniel to Dunkley. Dunkley wanted to get it in the middle. Handball over the top. Here goes Easton Wood. Got around one. Thought about the kick sideways. Knew it would hang in the air too long. So it was a good decision. Now the dogs. Delhouse gathers the ball at half back. Goes wide and finds Picken. Eight point lead GWS. 15 minutes of footy left. The dogs haven't been there since 61. And GWS have never been there. Picken inside 50. Stringer. Flies, couldn't hold the mark. Push off by Whitfield. Stringer bounces out of the pack. Gave the handball. Cordy on the left. Round the corner. Touched off the boot. Knocked through for a behind. See that kick of Pickens inside 50 was good. He didn't go straight down the line because there were numbers there. And he really put it to a good spot. And Stringer nearly pulled something off. But it was a great kick from Picken. We're just sensing, as we have done all game, a grandstand finish this prelim final. Lockie Whitfield number of the number one draft picks that the GWS have had access to and he's one of their best who just gets stronger and stronger this young man class operator beautifully weighted ball Scully through his hands Toby Green big influence from that man and Patton he had a couple to beat and dropped a really True. simple mark in the end his tackle was good on Easternwood they're the moment, speed two, that you were just talking about. Not only the drop mark, but I thought he should have attacked the ball on the ground as well, Richard. Yeah, this might come down to just a mistake, a big clanger. Gee, allowed Wood to come in at speed, and he was committed to winning the ball. No worries about that, Wood. So GWS here in their forward 50, or almost in their forward 50. There's Whitfield, been very impressive all night. Kelly at the bottom of the pack. Pick and appealing. Umpires have been great tonight, been consistent. Nichols, Schmidt and Meredith. Six umpires left in the race for the grand final. Three of them on show tonight. Over the top. Knocked down a shield. Plenty of time. Pick and took him on. Got him in a nice tackle. Scully picks up. Wrong sided. Squared the ball. Palmer didn't have the penetration in the leg. And Morris marks. Gets it moving quickly to Daniel, who's a big work there himself. And Green might have given away 50. He has. Silly. Just unnecessary from Toby Green. Will advance the little man Daniel to almost center wing. And has the Giants some time to get back and a lot of numbers back. So runner up in the NAB Rising Star this year. He really has been more mature than his years. Caleb Daniel this year, and that is what he does well. Oh, picks off targets, makes good decisions. Dunkley gets it moving. Bond and Pelly's forward. We've seen him take marks in this situation in big finals already. Josh Kelly wrapped up by Picken. Davis with some time. Yeah, did well, looked, but he only found a dog in Biggs, but he found the boundary line as well. So they've got the safety of the boundary line here, the GWS, if they need it. Lobb's in there. That was a massive contest from Lobb. He was behind Biggs. He had to make up ground and force a contest, up. which he did. What's the line? Empire saying, watch, you don't knock it out on the full here. 
Little knockout, Caleb Daniel. Boyd, happy for the boundary line. Had no oh! Thought the umpire had paid it deliberate then. <laughs> so it's a seven-point margin. Ten minutes gone in the last quarter here now. We know what's on the line. Hey! Round of 24, 25,000 here tonight. Packed to the rafters. Handball was meant for picking. Whitfield peeled it off quite brilliantly to Griffin. Griffin around the corner, goes down the line. Up they fly. Over the top went Roberts and runched it to the boundary. It was a tight handball from Tom Boyd. He's put more minutes than he ever has done in the ruck tonight. A big final and the loss of Ruffhead means he's just got to stand up this man on screen. There's Jordan Ruffhead. Significant eye injury. McLean, a really clever handball. Dalhouse poked the little one forward. Bonded Pelly. Worked Pat to lock the footy and then got a free kick. Man, Bulldogs. Clever play. Hold that goal. Gee, milked that well, didn't he, Das? Got his body in the right spot. Now a pounding kick. Stringer's the target. Two on one. Haynes did well. Might be 50 against Smith. Gee, this guy's played well. That's his sixth intercept mark. He reads it. Oh, that's a horrible kick, though. Yeah, not good from Haynes. Cordy gave it off to Dellhouse. Loaded up. It was smuggled off the boot. Took too long to get it to the boot. Ricochet. Little bounce ball here. Stringer brushes one. Tries to peel off another. Gives it off. Opportunity. Johannesson. 20 in front misses. Oh, 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 oh. It's on here. Gee. That was, uh, that was what Stringer likes, doesn't he? That ground ball where he can push off. Did it so well. I just wonder whether Jake Stringer might be a factor. Another quiet night for him. He's suddenly starting to look like he might do something special. Kelly. Kick in board. Well done, Morris. Missed it away. Taken by Dalhouse. Daniel back to Morris. Had a fresh airing. Great pressure, GWS. Hopper. Smart handball out. Kelly combines to Palmer. Got out of trouble. Palmer there. As a player down, I think it might be Hopper as well for GWS. Very slow to get back to his feet. But they're lucky to escape there, the dogs. Yeah, but that's the pressure. How many times have we seen smothers off handballs, off kicks? And closing the space quickly yeah, to smother in as your well. Face. Making players make decisions. Bonham Pelly to McRae. McRae tried to keep his feet. Dalhouse did. Got it inside 50 again. Danger, danger, danger. Dixon, the goal kicker's down there lurking. Smith, he's got a few as well. Pulled the kick. He was on his way. And then he realised it was going to be smothered. It was well done by Williams. In goes Caleb Daniel. Boy, it's on here. Shield, McLean, Kelly. Every time you get the ball, someone's hanging off the back of you. <laughs> Have a look at the fatigue in the players. Hands on head, hands on hips. They are in the red zone at the moment. They've given everything they have and they've got to fight for another 12 minutes of this game. Incredible scenes here. Here came Shield, Cornelio, his partner in crime. Little handle from Cordy. Johannesson's got some run left in his oh. legs. Kick wasn't great. It's going to come down to who can execute. It's really hard to get a real chain of play happening here at the moment. Neither team can. Davis White, McLean the thump. So the dogs have locked it in their forward half of the ground for considerable time here. Look at the handball from Libertore. Unbelievable to Smith. Haynes the run down. Half tackle was brilliant. There's no doubt that put him off. Dixon. Whitfield takes it over the line. The boss. Just well pressure. Done. Yeah. He look, was away. Look at the handball here from Libba. That wasn't a throw at all. That is just a superb handball from Tom Liberatore to give his team a chance. Mumford, Lockie Hunt, it, tackled by Thomason, spills out to McRae on his favourite left foot. Sliding ball hits the post. Slaps the ground. They get it back to within five points. And they are pressing big time. There's a lot of players bent over with hands on knees at the moment. Oh, boy. Who can find some run? <laughs> Both teams almost... Almost done in the juice area. They're, they're running out of gas here. It's a real fight. Dogs have had it in their forward half for at least three or four minutes here, maybe longer. And as you said before, Richo, it's all about who can execute under extreme fatigue. When they get that half a chance at a shot at goal or to hit up a teammate, they have to execute perfectly. Lobb sees nothing, so he too goes down the line at the back pattern, almost reeled it in Hamling over the line. So GWS have now forced it almost into their, well, they have, into their forward half of the ground. Can they keep it there? 
They've got no one inside their Ford 50 at the moment, the Giants. Patton's just worked back. Halfway mark of the final term. The winner plays in the grand final. It's a five-point ball game. McRae to Daniel really starting to find his way into the game. The kick was always going to be marked, though. And it was Wilson back there in the right spot. I'd love to get a switch here, the Giants. They go long down the line instead. Biggs comes across. At the back was Lobb, who's looking imposing. What about the stress for those two? <laughs> Played together for the Western Bulldogs, both Leon Cameron and Luke Beveridge. They're great friends. Definition of stress, those two Absolutely. at the moment. Absolutely. Smith, little handball out wide. Kelly, fast hands. Likewise, Griffin stolen here by Boyd. Boyd gathers. Got it to McRae on his left, slid the handball back inside, under pressure was Dunkley, as he got the strength to bust it, went for the fresh area out of the middle, Johannesson, he's a lively player, he can run, here he Scott goes, caressing ball to bottom belly, bottom belly, no one between here and the goal, paddles it up, gets back under his left foot, to hit the front, to hit the front, the dogs are in front by a point, bottom belly has brought them to their feet. about that the young champ the all australian and he came off with a serious hip injury back out there and the composure of that young champion something to behold and look at the dogs fans they just can't they can't bear it neither can i said before who can find some run well probably the quickest player on the ground just did and it was that 25 meter burst that opened it all up Daniel really starting to get involved in the game the Bulldogs surge forward again he's Shaw McRae pulled up a little soft there on that occasion flicked out by Dalhouse Scully bends it back. Boyd in a one-on-one, and he's taking the mark in front of Devin Smith. They're yeah, called play on by the umpire, but he gave it off to Daniel. Daniel trying to thread the needle. Down low court, he couldn't hold the mark. Green, clever tap on. Wilson tackled. Dunkley right there. Umpire says ball up. They've had 11 of the last 13 inside 50s to Western Bulldogs. They appear to have more momentum than the Giants. They can't get anything happening at the moment. Boyd to Smith. Smith to Dunkley. Dunkley got a poker in the Bontempelli direction. Here's Tomlinson. Two of the young guns, Bontempelli and Tomlinson. Throw it in. Deep in dogland. Scored a lot of goals, the Bulldogs, from this exact setup. Boundary throw-ins inside 50. They've been the clearance specialist, the contested possession specialist. Let's have a look. Tom Boyd. Slap four through Cam Clay Smith. He's kicked four in the first half. The Bratore. Bontempelli, that won't be coming out in a hurry. It is going to be super hard for the Giants to get a transition happening from here. Clay Smith. It's going to be so tough to get out for them. <laughs> Through with speed there. The knockdown, here he is again, Smith. He's a goer. Left foot high in the air. Anyone's ball, a mark will count. Up goes Davis. The spoil was good. Daniel beat the ball in front of goal. Cordy's got another. They've kicked it. They've hit the front, the dogs. Oh, he's got a couple. Great work. They just couldn't clear the footy, the Giants. It would have been better for them to try and get a point conceded and get the ball back on a kick in. They couldn't. They're under siege. And the dogs now with a seven point lead. Three goals, three. The They're going nuts at the Docklands back in Melbourne. There's Tony Liberatore, Brownlow medalist, his son Tom out there tonight. He can barely contain himself. Liver, three comes picking. They've got off the canvas. The dogs, good tackle. It was Whitfield, and he's been rewarded. Illegal disposal, said the umpire. So Whitfield slams it on the boot. Jeremy Cameron up he goes. Couldn't hold the mark. Green with a quick boot. Lands with Patton. He's taken the mark. He'll go back and have the shot. 
this to get GWS within a point. So, Patton to reply was his fourth goal. Good crumb. Good crumb there from Green. He's got that kick forward. 20 metres out directly in front. Patton lines up. GWS to stay in the hunt, and they do. One point down. Oh, Leon Cameron. <laughs> I can't imagine what a coach is feeling in this sort of situation. Grand final, berth up for Krabs. And the coaches, they'd be feeling it more than anyone. At least the players are out there running around. They haven't got time to think as much as the guys up in the box. What a game. Just a scrappy kick forward. Down the other end, the dog's got their last goal just from scrapping it forward. That's what it's that's what it's taking now. It's not much clean footy out there. Loose man back at either end. These clearances are just crucial now. Big Mummy, Boyd, Bontempelli, that was Sheil who kicked it out to the wing. The courage of picking to run. He toe-pokes it forward at 6 up. He's got Johannesson with him. The dogs will go forward. Dunkley's the deepest. Going back, Haynes. Well done, Tomlinson. See the run, Johannesson's run, Pickens' desperation. So we have seven minutes remaining to decide who plays Sydney in the grand final. Either way, it's going to be history making. A point in it here. McRae used his head, umpire said. That's why he didn't get the free. Libba boot to ball. The mark will count here. Dogs in front. Off hands. McRae. McLean. They're all desperados. Bottom pallet in his favourite left foot. Tried to bend it. Not enough. Cordy almost marked it on his head. Couldn't quite reel it in. And now Smith. Gee, they're playing with the fire here at the moment. GWS. Tomlinson did well. Got the handball over the top. Intercepted by Dunkley. And here come the dogs. He loads up Joe Hatterson from 50. He's capable from there. Just bent it to the left. That was a massive moment. They're the best ground ball get team in the competition in the forward half. And when the ball hits the ground inside their 50 at the moment, the dogs, they look so dangerous. Oh, what an aggressive kick from Williams. Oh. But he's dropped it. Shoot, I thought he'd taken it. Took his eye off it. That's it was the courage that's, through the middle of the ground. It's, it's courage, but it's referred pressure too because the dogs are there all night. He would he would hold that. Oh boy, I think 99 thought, times out of 100 normally. Yeah, thought there was a bit of pressure coming from behind now. In the last six minutes, it's little things that matter. Little things that matter now. Jeremy Cameron pushed under the ball. Morris did well not to infringe Wood. Back to Morris. Morris careful with the kick. Touch play on. Partially smothered off the boot. Palmer looks short of leg speed here at the moment. A little handball over the top. Hunter to McLean. McLean kicks it out of bounds on the fall. See when the, the ball hit the deck on the Giants' half forward line there. The dogs mopped up. They've got to find something at ground level. Two-point point ball game. Under six minutes remaining. Grand final spot on offer. The Western Bulldogs haven't been there since 1961. The GWS looking for their first grand final appearance. Big pack form. Boyd there, slapped out by Griffin towards the boundary line. The old backyard uh, dash. Next goal wins. <laughs> the old backyard job. Jeez, there might be another twist or turn yet. Bristol, it's been one of those years. 20,090 days since the Dogs last played in the 61. Premiership, of course. Free kick to Toby Green. Got, got even numbers forward. Since the last grand final, of course. 54, the Premiership off hands. Palmer to Smith. Run down by Stringer from behind. In there is Smith fighting hard. The two Smiths, one from each side, and Scully. It was a good kick inside 50. He knew he had even numbers. He got a big contest from Lobb. So look at the numbers around this. Bulldogs got to defend for their life now. On the run, Jeremy Cameron hasn't been sighted. Right foot shot at goal. And he's dragged it across the face. One point ball game. They're going to scramble to get into their positions here, the Giants. Get their zone set up quickly. 
another ball on the ground here as well. Umpire said not 15 from the kick in. That one barely the journey. Look at the Dogs fans holding their collective breaths. GWS, they're not sure whether to smile or cry either. Bonton Pally. These are the moments. Contested mark down the line. 4.45 remaining. Dogs by a point. Bonham Pelly's been asked to move it on. Don't mess around here, it'd be my advice. Bonham Pelly goes low and hard down the line. Kicks it straight to Palmer. So Palmer's got the mark here. Just back of centre wing. Reese Palmer into the side. Hadn't played since the round 16. Lost to the Pies here at Spotless Stadium. Here's Spiggs. Easton Wood goes oh, down, caught by high, and he looks really sore. I reckon Johnny Patton in that marking contest might have made Thank contact. You. Oh, he looks a bit, a bit sorry. Right. Uh, uh, thumbs up. Okay. The Bulldogs captain's okay. Half back here. Boyd Mumford. Little handball over the top to Griffin. Tackle. Scully. Space. Pat full. Handball. Back. Yeah. Mumford. Goes inside 50. GWS got the numbers. Patton over the back. Couldn't hold the mark. Off hands. Green. Left foot. Had time to think. Scores a level. Scores a level in the prelim final. With 3.53 remaining. And if it's level at the end... It's five minutes extra, extra time each way, Das. You just can't describe the tension in this stadium at the moment. There's Johannesson to himself down the line. Who can stand up? Who can make a hero of themselves? Whitfield. And he's happy to let that one go over. Appealing for out of bounds without being touched, but I hadn't realised that Johannesson had played to himself. Made plenty and of metres up there, Johannesson. That was a good play. Got it up to the wing. And so right now, coaches have got to be thinking, who do you want on the ground to finish the game? Because you may not get him on, Dars. Oh, pick and smother was enormous. He goes back in, flicked it out the Liberatore, up and under job. Dunkley's the one. Dixon pushed off it. Big pack. Who can get it front and centre? Bond and Pelly's there. Liberatore. McRae's out the back. He'll hit McRae. Haynes gets there. No, it's McRae. So Jack McRae, 3.21 remaining. He did a hamstring and missed five weeks. There was huge doubt whether this man would play another game this year. Now, the biggest kick in his young life. He ducked out the back after that marking contest at half forward. He didn't ball watch. He got forward, made position. Great kick inside 50. Just the 18 career goals in his 76 games, Jack McRae. Can he handle the pressure? Draws breath directly in front to give the Bulldogs a six-point lead. He's done it. The Dogs are in front by a goal. And they come from everywhere. What about that? Just extraordinary scenes now. This is what they train for. Do they get numbers back, the Dogs? I think see, they might. See that there? The marking contest on the 50. The ball went back into the middle. Haynes just got caught ball watching for a little bit. McRae got out the back. And what pressure he soaked up to kick the goal. So they've rolled numbers back here, the Dogs. They've got two or three behind the ball. They're going to try and soak up this last two minutes, 52 seconds for a spot in the grand final. It's been 55 years. Yeah. Oh, damn it. You got, what about this? We've got five forwards, the Dogs. Number back, back in the middle we go. Mumford knocks down off the back of the square with Heath Shorter sent off with Johannes off the ground to tie it up. Smith, Smith of GWS has got a ripper, misses. So that rules out the draw, I reckon. Probably rule out the draw with the dogs by five. It's going to be a win either way now. There's some cramping players out there too, stretching calves. So Matty Boyd's going to himself and then he kicks it through the corridor, so this is a massive play. Griffin got it, and then he was tackled by Liberatore. Goes back in after it. Got hold of Patfield. Look at the fight. 2.24. Dogs by five, but it may as well be one point because a goal can win it for GWS. Knocked down by Mumford. Caleb Daniel, quick kick out of the pack. Here's McLean. The bounce sat a little high for him. The tackle from behind by Wilson was good. He then fell over. McLean got him. Must knock it out now. Pat full on all fours. Look at the desperation. Jake Stringer's one out. Inside 50 for the doggies back there in the middle of your screen. 
Geez, that's a dangerous situation. Two minutes remaining. Dogs at half forward. Off hands, Daniel went through his hands. Whitfield tried to get rid of it. Good tackle by Daniel. Out the back to Biggs. Picked it up, bang. There's the one on one, Richard. Uh, Richo Wood backing back very bravely as well. Have a look at this. They can swing shot off half back. Here they go into the middle of the ground. Scully got it. Wheels onto the left boot. Long ball inside 50. Toby Green's got a market. Got both hands on it. Couldn't do it. Wood did well. Now Dunkley at ground level. Doesn't want it to come out. Davis to Whitfield. Look at this. Roberts, a high ball out of trouble. Play Smith under it. They want to get a boundary throw in the dogs. A minute 29 on the clock. Easton Wood, big play. Massive play, Easton Wood. We know he attacks the ball in the air. Toby Green made a great contest, but Wood got back. Big, big clearance here. Five-point margin. Minute 27 remaining. Picking. And now McLean emerges with the footy to Smith. Bonson Pelly's going to poke it down the line. Big one on one. Pat Full. Dixon. They get some meterage and they get some time off the clock, the dogs. <laughs> one minute 14. Dogs by five. Grand final berth. They need a clean ball here, the Giants. The last time was 1961. GWS have never been there and got a free to McLean. Now we can take about 10 seconds off the clock here. They've got numbers free. They can come back. They've got two numbers back. They must man up, GWS. It's a risky one to go back. Uh, now they've got, they've got to keep it moving quickly. They can't afford to get trapped at half back. And now Dunkley has. They're manned up now. Now it's not in the hands of the best kicker in their team, that is for sure. He goes down the line, 40 seconds remaining. Up they fly. If they go inside 50, they've just about got it. Over the hand of Boyd. Boyd to Stringer. Stringer can go all the way. He kicks to the middle. And Dixon marks. I think the dogs are going to get there now. The dogs are going to get there. A point will secure them at worst the draw. And a goal will win it for them. On here, Warren. Corey, that's it. 15 on. I've been wanting to say this for as long as I can remember. The Bulldogs go through to a grand final. Can you believe it? it the siren will sound. A 55-year drought ended. The Dogs are in the grand final. Wow. What about that? 20,090 days since their last grand final and the dogs have made history the big dance with Sydney unbelievable Das what are you feeling right now I just can't believe it, have a look at the scenes Look at Tony Liberatore, so Alberti. What about these scenes? 55 year drought between grand finals. First side ever to make it from seventh position, the Dogs. And they did it without that man for the entire second half. And that really is the story of the year, Dust. It's been backs against the wall with injury again tonight. It's just such a courageous group, Richo. They never doubt that they can win from whatever position and they found a way again. They were out. It looked like GWS would run over the top. And First time the two teams that have had the week off have both missed the grand final. Both missed the grand final as well. Let's get down the lane. Oh, Marcus Bond and Pally. How special is that? You're in a grand final. Mate, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. We're, uh, we're at, at. That's the feeling right there um, for us so far in, in most of our careers, and uh, we're into a granny main so we're at. Was that one of the most incredible last quarters you've ever been involved in? The momentum both way, but you did it. Mate, it's it's hard to really come to terms with it as soon as the siren goes, because you're totally exhausted. Um, and that last quarter, it's one of the hardest quarters I've played on. You just got to keep yourself going, keep getting the ball to go your way, and hang on. All year you guys have overcome so much. You're playing away at some spotless stadium against a team that was supposed to overpower you. And at times throughout the game, it looked like they would, but you never gave up, did you? Yeah, we, we've written our own history here tonight. Um, not many would have expected it from us. Um, 
and we're not too fussed that we're the underdog and we've got that many people here supporting us. Um, the Raw is incredible. Uh, we owe it to every single one of these people here with us. Oh, mate, enjoy it. Soak it up. Good luck next week. You're going to a granny. Can you believe that young man is still 20 years of age? He's got peak plates on his car. He's one of the most exciting players in the game. Peter Gordon, Stewie Cofield on screen there. A lot of people, as Leon Cameron celebrates and commiserates with a great moment. Let's get down to Cameron Lee. Well, I've got the man, Dars, that I felt was the best man on the ground, Clay Smith. When that game was in the balance in the first half, four goals to yourself. I know you're not going to want to talk about yourself, but you're one of so many inspirational stories here tonight. What a moment this is for you guys. It's unbelievable, mate. Um, from where we've come from, um, it's just, we are written off probably at the start of the final series going over there. And we've just overcome so much. Uh, well, that's one of my best mates on Monday during the week, so this goes for Daisy and I fucking love him. Really, uh, really sad to hear that and now our thoughts are with you. The, you've had to overcome so much throughout your career. Your knee reconstructions, obviously, is what you've just mentioned there on Monday. You're a tough man, mate. Mate, <laughs> footy does wonder, wonders, mate. Um, I've been through some dark times, but it's all worth it when, when we're going to a grand final next week and we don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to give it our all and We'll see what happens. It's a pretty special bunch of blokes you play with as well. That last quarter, Jack McRae having to kick that goal to nail it. Special efforts all round. That's finals footy. <laughs> uh, that's ice in the veins. And he goes, all right, old Jacko. But we've got 22 absolute rippers out there that play for each other, play for the coach. Bobo's unreal. For the supporters here, it's absolutely amazing. Enjoy the week. It's going to be huge. Good luck next Saturday. Well done tonight. Sweet, Eric. You're watching Finals Footy on Fox post-game. 28,929,600 minutes <laughs> since the Dogs were last in the grand final. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Extraordinary. And what a way to do it, gentlemen. We were sitting up there watching it, all of us just on the edge of our seats, not knowing... It was going to go either way. It ebbed and flowed for the entire game. Yeah. And at different stages, it looked like a team would get a little break and then the opposition would reel them in. And then I thought in the last quarter, GWS opened up a couple of goals in front. You thought they might go away yeah. from it. But this team will not be denied. Yeah, pressure was amazing. And uh, quite often you get a really tight prelim final. And uh, we certainly got it tonight. They were fantastic. And GWS stopped. Yeah, the did, Bulldogs yeah. had all the running and they yeah. locked it in their forward half for so long, which... Takes a lot out of you when you have to defend for a long time. Eventually, the damn wall broke, won't you? It's always very emotional once that final siren goes on prelim final day, yeah. but even more so with this team. One, because of the history, yeah. 55 years yeah. since their last grand final, but also the way they've gone about it. They got rolled round 23 against Frio, had to bring in three players. If they didn't have the bye pre-finals, they don't get to this stage. They've done an amazing job, and I think we all feel for the... The likes of Bob Murphy, Mitch Wallace. Our, Mitch Wallace. Tears going, isn't he? Even our co-commentator and Brad Johnson. We yeah. hear Darcy's emotion in the call, but you know Brad Johnson played in six prelims. I'm sure he'd be very emotional now to see his team in there. What about, we saw how tired all the players were mm. in that last quarter. One player, Jason Johannesson, looked like yeah. he'd just come on yeah, the ground. Dude. He yeah. was going on bursts yeah. that no one could get anywhere near. He was running above the ground. Everyone else was knee deep in quicksand. It's interesting too. And the, the Giants, they lost their uh, they run, their ability to really move the ball quickly out of defence. Uh, but you just imagine Luke, Luke Beveridge, the amount of confidence uh, he's given to the players. He shouted all the supporters' breakfast today. <laughs> I think he'd be shouting them a few boxes for the bus trip home. Well, a few I boxes so. of beer, I'd say. I hope so, because they ran out of beer at half time <laughs> yeah, at the yeah, ground yeah. here tonight. The key to this is, though, as, as momentous an occasion that it is, there's a bigger one coming. Yeah. So they That's, can't yeah. expend all their emotional energy on realising the success they've had in this game, knowing they've got to go to another level again next week. You just see Bont then saying, one more. Yeah. I, think one they're young. more. I think they're young, though, and they've just embraced it. You know, yeah. they, you could have said that it was a big up last week. It was a big up the first week against the West Coast Eagles. Yeah. And I, I think Luke Beveridge just knows how to stabilise me. He embraces the victory, and they enjoy it, and then he seems to be able to stabilise it. I think he, uh, there will be certainly some celebration for a few hours tonight, and, yeah. but... Uh, the coach will reinforce, you've got to get your rehab right, you've got to get your recovery right, we've got to trip back, and then enjoy and respect almost the biggest year of your football life so far. So there'll be uh, anxious moments and anxious waits now for people like Jordan Roughhead, 
yep. uh, who got that nasty eye injury. And who was playing really well up until that yeah. point in time too. But uh, what a thrill for these fans to have made the journey. Have, many of them would have stuck by them through thick and thin, year after year after year, just wondering, when are we going to get some success? And there's uh, jumping Joe Hannison and embracing Bob Murphy with Dunkley. Peter Gordon, what a stalwart he has been and uh, what a general of the club. Easterwood, the captain this year after Bob Murphy yep. uh, got injured. He's been a fantastic boy from Camperdown. Well, then, and we spoke about the, the two years of uh, potential turmoil they've had over the last couple of years. And you go back to, I mean, they merged in they 89 with Fitz, mm. Fitzroy and got themselves out of it and uh, been challenged on numerous occasions. But they just got themselves on the crest of a wave. And there's the emotion of Bob Murphy. He's which finding is, it hard, isn't he? Oh, it's, I mean, and that would be elation. I mean, it's hard that he's not going to be out there, but he'd be so pleased for his teammates. And he's still an integral part of it. Oh, he you is. Can't, I mean, he's invaluable. Well, he's, he's contributed been, off the he, field. He would have been preparing for this potentially all year. You know, it mm. happened in round three, so he hasn't been there. It would have been very raw if he had done his knee last week or this week, but he'd be just so proud at the moment, I think. Now they've got one hand on that Premiership Cup. Oh, I think Bond had a good look at it yeah. there. It was no tempted one, to touch no it. No one touched <laughs> it, though, no, Richie. No. All superstition yeah. kicks in, doesn't it? Yeah, don't touch it yet. So we'll follow them in. They'll sing the song. Sydney happy to be playing the Dogs, or would they have preferred to play the GWS? I don't think they would have had a preference. They would just be hoping that the two of them went at each other, which they did. Which they did. They yeah. get an extra day's rest. And something's going to happen. They get, the Bulldogs will have to produce something really special next week if... Sydney show what they had the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and the Bulldogs have had success even in Sydney against uh, the Sydney Swans. Look so at the room. They'll come in with coffers. Look at this. Rowan Smith there, who's <laughs> pretty pumped as well. The coaches aren't trying to calm them down. No, you've got to give them yeah. a little bit of leash, I think, here. The noise in that room would be unbelievable right now. And so is the song going to be, which we're going to be hearing in just a few seconds' time after a thrilling six-point win. They are into the grand final.